And I believe that begins episode 34 of Ooh. Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th ed game where I, the dungeon master, impose all kinds of nasty things on the player's characters. All of the nasties. And the player characters to f foil every single plan I've ever made, which is kind of the point, really, of D&D when it comes down to it. Uh, welcome, and uh, yeah, I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, here to DM this game. For probably the last week for a while that we'll be seen in this particular environment, we're going to try to move to a conveniently air-conditioned environment, uh, hopefully, uh, starting next week. We'll talk more about that perhaps later, or maybe we'll just leave you with that teaser and never actually do it. <laughs> Who knows? But around the table, I have my wonderful players, starting on my left. Hi, I'm Jody. I'm going to be playing Clark, the half-orc fighting rogue, who's looking at a strange space egg. <laughs> I'm Marie. I play Alzara, who is currently wind, uh, because she is a druid of the moon variety. <laughs> I'm Pat. I'm playing uh, Kuzlaima, the kobold ranger bard. I'm Nanix, and I'm playing Zakis, half-elf wizard, who is currently flying and 14 feet tall. Yeah. When, when I first made him, I swear he was 5'8". <laughs> <laughs> it's been... Um, I guess a lengthening experience? Yeah. There's gotta be a, better, be a better pun in there somewhere. Alright, a bit of a description of what's happened prior to this. Uh, let's see if I can get through this quickly. Following a battle with ghosts, Sadalitas decided it was time to take a rest. Throughout the night it was discovered that the passage below was crudely blocked off with medium-sized rocks being dropped, apparently, by a glumkin. Fully rested, they push aside the flimsy barrier to discover a breach in the wall uh, through which a steady stream of brackish water from Greybrook is flowing. Zakis used magic to look ahead and discover an imprisoned woman who at first called herself Heather, but was later revealed to be the hag, Bone Twitch. Her body was drastically altered with, in, with a skeleton showing on her face and on one arm. The results of experiments done, apparently, by Emerald Emigir. Despite her offer to help in exchange for release, the group left her in her magical cage and continued on downward. She's safer there. <laughs> for us and for her. It's probably true. As they descended, the floor was increasingly covered with gray water, making it hazardous. In addition, there was a familiar sensation in the back of their heads, reminiscent of the hum. In the room, they found an oblong egg-shaped chamber seemed to be a combination of crafted magic and tendrils of organic matter fed by the water. As they approached, side effects from spells and the magical radiation temporarily conjured a unicorn named Laviel, who was infested by a Greybrook and begged to be killed, lest it return to its own plane with the infestation. In dying, the unicorn's blood transformed into a healing substance, freeing Zacchaeus of his misshapen face and hand. Regrouping by the chamber, the group looks closer at this egg-shaped vessel, noticing a broken uh, space in the back that once contained spirit energy. At this point, it seemed that they were noticed by the inhabitant of the pod, who telepathically announced itself to be Bezetsi, the psychic force that rang in their minds. And that is where we are, that question still lingering somewhat in your heads as to the nature What of is Nexus, uh, Zexus? Um, size. Uh, it is the effect of the enlarge spell. Of enlarge? Is... More of Aeon to provide a base so that we know where he is. Sure. Uh, let me just double check on that spell. I believe it just moves you up one, one size category, so that would be from medium, medium to, to large. large. There is a large base. Um, just as a I'll just put him on the side here. of that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your size doubles in all dimensions. Your weight is multiplied by eight. Uh, you increase your size in one category from medium to large. Um, a couple of things to note for yourself: until the spell ends, you also have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. Uh, you don't have any you know, carry any weapons, but they would have grown to match your new size. Okay. Um, and yeah, so you don't have any weapons. No change in that particular thing. So, and you're currently floating above the floor. I believe that would apply to unarmed strikes as well. The uh, it specifically says weapons. Okay. So staff. 
Yeah, um, he does have a quarter staff. If you, if you, you, if you, I don't think you've ever struck anything with a quarter staff. But oh, he did. has a few times. <laughs> if you did, it would be an additional D four extra. Day. It's a dollar staff now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's a two dollar staff actually. Yeah. Two bucks staff. Two bucks stick. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, all right. So as you all surround this this uh, chamber, this egg, and you see some motion within, presumably whatever uh, Bazetsi is, you still have that ringing question in your mind. Now, each of you can make an insight check, actually. And we should put uh, uh, Radix back by the edge of the water. She would not have gone that far in. 19. Oops, sorry. Ooh, that teetered. <laughs> uh, 12. Oh, this is the purple no, person, that's, yeah? That's, that's Radix, yeah. Okay, I'll give that to my fellows over there. Uh, <laughs> I am, have made myself flat, and I'm against the wall okay. around Zacchaeus. Yeah. I didn't help, did I? So, we got a 19 for insight. What else? 23. 23. 12. 12. 12. 12? Okay. Yeah. Interesting left, right side of the table here. So, it for the two of you, for, for the two of you, the, your mind is still kind of rattling. You're looking mm -hmm. around for where the attack came from. Um, it was just a, a shock. You weren't really expecting anything like that. You didn't expect any response like that. For the two of you, um, Zakis, first thing you notice is this: there's a genuine question there. As in, it's not it's not a, a, a statement of doom. It's a statement of, huh? Somebody's here. For uh, Kujima, it's genuine surprise. As in, they did not expect anybody to be here, and probably was more like an instinctual reaction than any sort of deliberate deliberate punishment. You can hear the sound of the water uh, rolling, but nothing seems to be changing at the moment. Uh, hello? Calling out to the room? Or in the direction of the egg. Okay. I'm also going to think it back to the egg, just, just in case it'll like, respond telepathically. Okay. Uh, no immediate response. Uh, I... As a response to that, ready in action to hit anything that seems threatening. Okay. Did it say who has come in here or what? I forget what it actually said. Uh, I forget exactly the wording, but that? essentially it was... Who dares disturb the rest, the rest of Zetsu? Uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Basically yeah. Cave of Wonders style. <laughs> I don't get the reference, but... Aladdin. For, ah. <laughs> um... What is Zacchaeus thinking? You may call me Ironbound. Okay. So you're saying that I love? Hmm? It asked the question. Okay. Yeah. What is Zacchaeus thinking right now? Well, I have a note from the previous session saying that Zacchaeus knows it's a clone god and that the water might produce different results. So he's kind of wondering about that, how that might affect it, and where, what kind of spell that entity used to like get into our minds and talk. Okay. Make a wisdom saving throw. Uh -oh. Two! Wait, did I approach? Even with a, with a proficiency bonus, that's no, not, it's not, not quite enough. enough. No. <laughs> okay. Um, describe what Zacchaeus's thought of the tower is, and what his true purpose is being here, especially with respect to Imril Hemikir. Okay, like what Zacchaeus's true purpose is for yep. being here? Yep. What's the deeper thoughts behind Zacchaeus's mind with respect to the tower itself? Well, surface thoughts would be frustration and trying to figure out the mystery. Yep, but deeper thoughts. Yeah, I'm trying to like work through them myself. Sure, sure. <laughs> deeper thoughts would be how many times was Emerald here? What happened? How did he escape? And can he be trusted? Okay. Just so, like, questions more than anything. And, and growing frustration still about, like, not knowing if Emerald's a good guy or bad guy. Not knowing who to trust anymore, just stuff like that. 
Okay. Also being kind of scared of losing his concentration and falling down to the water. Although the water is not in the hook in the uh, There's a little bit flowing into the room that okay. flows to where those tendrils are reaching up to the egg. Um, also a clone pod. I need to learn this spell. <laughs> okay, so there's a bit of a bit of uh, you're a bit intrigued. Yeah. You're wondering how this thing could be here. What was Emerald doing? Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. Okay. Um, as you're kind of hovering there, thinking uh, towards the the creature, trying or thinking towards the egg, towards the egg rather, you do feel that brush on your mind of someone going through your memories and starting to follow different tendrils of thinking. Uh, first kind of following your traversal down the tower, how you got here is is in the mind as well, kind of examining that. Quickly looks at the memory of you falling through the, the portal and then sort of discards it, almost as though not useful. Yeah. Um, but starts to dig into your memories of Emerald Emikir. You can make another wisdom saving throw. Uh, sorry. Do, 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 do. Yeah, an intelligence check, actually, in this case. Ah, damn it. Well, is that intelligence check or intelligence saving throw? Intelligence check. Okay. Is that cocked or is that like... Yes. Fuck. Can you put another die on it? Yes, I could have. But I've already rerolled, so that's... Do I have a thing that gives me, like, more... Nope. No, I have an item that I can use, I'm pretty sure. Well, you have the, the Caller of Brilliance. Yeah. That's... Yeah. You could re-roll the die with mm -hmm. that. As soon as I find where the Caller of Brilliance is... Oh, Brilliant Caller, yes. Or Brilliant Caller. <laughs> Depending on what I named it. But you feel this thing, this this force rooting through your mind. What's your instinctual reaction? I'm gonna or see. Your, or like, your intellectual reaction, I guess. I'm just gonna see uh, what kind of memories it's trying to access. I mean, if I can see it or feel it. Okay. Rooting through my so mind. you're not going to interfere with its its thoughts right now. Not yet. Okay. Um, you feel it, uh, kind of following threads of Emerald Emikir, conjuring up to mind thoughts of the library and the one-armed emerald that's, that's been there and kind of some, replaying some of your conversations with them, um, but almost with the sound off, almost as though they're viewing it uh, but not bothering to listen. Um, then it moves to a thought of My Lee and her training and some of the stuff that she gave to you. Yeah. And kind of probing deeper and deeper and kind of coming back a lot to your magical training and trying to, um, you know, just kind of examining it at the moment. Can I figure out, like, what it's trying to do or accomplish? Um, or is that the intelligence check that I totally watched? Nope. That, the intelligence check was basically, is your mind able to shift to things it doesn't want or you don't want it to see? Okay. But you literally kind of both rolled badly and indicated that you're letting it go. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll allow you to make an intelligence check to determine or try to determine where it's going. Um, let's make this uh, make this you know insights not intelligence. What's an intelligence one? Arcana. Uh, investigation. Okay. As you're trying to put together the pieces and parts of it's going through your mind. Twenty one. Twenty one. Um, it seems uh, fascinated by emerald, mm -hmm. fascinated by magic, and. Almost as though it's trying to learn the magic second hand, or understand or evaluate your power. Um, it seems to be fixated on that, and it also seems to be trying to direct towards what you know of the tower, but it quickly exhausted that because you don't know much about this tower. So it moved to older memories. What are the rest of you doing? Well, nothing seems to be happening at the moment. There was a mental scream, mm -hmm. and then there's silence, mm -hmm. and then. What changes in the room because of it, if any? Nothing. Okay. The room does not seem to change. It gets eerily quiet as you're sort of trying to listen for something, and you can hear the sound of the water splashing. Um, it's sort of a little bit more than murky. Um, you kind of have some idea what lives in that water. Mm. Clark will stand ready with the glaive in hand at whatever strikes him next, I guess. Okay. I'll say towards the egg in particular, 
I feel you in my mind. Are you in the egg or in the pod? What Say that out loud? Yeah. Okay. What do you want? But I'm assuming if I'm saying it out loud, I'm also thinking it, so it should respond. It's not quite the same, but... <laughs> um, you feel the, the sensation of the rifling through your memory kind of with, uh, withdrawing. Um, and each of you hear in your mind, Ah, I see. You are also seekers after the wreckage of Emerald Amakir. Interesting. Perhaps we can work together. Possibly. We're also mainly trying to escape. And which wreckage are you referring to? Um, I'm only very... I, I, when it comes to Emerald Amakir, I believe I've only scratched the surface of any potential wreckages he may have left. He has made an impact here. Good? Bad? Different. We wish to know how he escaped. If we knew the answer to that question, we would not be here. Uh, who are you, by the way? I am Bezetsi. I have said so. But what are you? Species? Entity? I am become something more than any of my kind. I am new. What were you originally? Something different. But what was your kind? There are many names for my people. They are misunderstood. And I know you would misunderstand it too. I have seen your kind to come through before. Rash. Individual. I admire some of Okay. But it's, I still want to know what kind you... What, what terms are used to describe your kind? You said there are many. Surely I will, I will know a few. As you've noticed, peering through my memories, I work in a library, so chances are whatever your kind of are referred to as, I would, I would have read about it in a book. I wish to see this library. It contains much knowledge I could use. Mm -hmm. It is a wonderful place. Perhaps if we can collaborate, and if you prove if you prove to be a trustworthy and generally good ally, maybe something can be arranged. Maybe. I'm looking at my compatriots. Are they are they hearing this? You are all hearing <laughs> verbally his part of the conversation. The rest kind of echoed in your minds. I stare. <laughs> the elemental is standing very still and staring at you. <laughs> I'm probably feeling the stare. <laughs> <laughs> There's no eyes, but you can still definitely feel the stare. There's that one gust of wind hitting me at that, at that particular angle. That Literally, the me. eyes are projecting gusts of wind. <laughs> <laughs> A little creepy. Is he going to tell me you look? You get the impression there's a consideration going on, whether they can trust you. Well, the feeling is mutual. That's something like... Play Do you thinking. know what lies beneath this room? No. More Wonder. disgusting water, I'm assuming. Wonder. The remains of what I believe the wizard had used to escape. And more power. There seems to be a star fragment. Is that what it is? To the best of my knowledge. We have no stars here. Exactly, which is why I thought it was incredibly weird. There was a collision centuries ago that may have been your star. How do I control the power? That I am not sure. And what would you do with that power if you were to control it? I would grow to be more than I am. That's an incredibly vague answer. My plans at present are non-specific. Do you know uh, Bone Twitch? She's one floor up, by any chance? I have seen the hag, yes. What? How did Emerald trick her? She is vain. 
She believed she controlled him. She was wrong. What are Elzera's surface thoughts at the moment? Surface thoughts are shut up, Zacchaeus. Shut up, Zacchaeus. <laughs> shut up, Zacchaeus. <laughs> is it a distrust of Zacchaeus at the moment, or just a fear, or is it what's the emotion? Fear, fear of giving too much information. Okay. Make Zacchaeus a wisdom is, saving throw. Zacchaeus is just like this is an academic chat, and I find an opportunity. I can learn more things about this being. Uh, that is uh, twenty-two. Twenty-two. There's a sudden surge in your mind. Um, but you kind of clamp down on your thoughts before anything escapes. But something was definitely looking to look deeper. What purpose do you have here? Well, we were trying to escape now that we're here. Uh, players are just trying to remember what the purpose was originally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you did kind of fall into this area, yeah. but right. you discovered a purpose along the way. My purpose is to get to the heart of the, to the, heart of the forest, I think. Um, my my purpose is to find Riordan, wherever this ring is taking me. Yeah. Um, what are um, Kujima's surface thoughts at the moment? Just keeping an eye out for danger. Okay. Any sort of emotional contents or feelings towards whatever this is, but that's it. It's probably powerful. Emotionally. I was going to worry that I won't be able to defend them from whatever it is. Okay. Also, curiosity as to what's downstairs now that they've mentioned it. <laughs> okay. Well, we were trying to find the heart of a. Uh, you know. You know the, the yes. Heart. The center Whose of the heart? Peturo's. Is it the heart of the forest? Peturo's heart? I do not know. Tell me more of the heart of the forest. It has some significance. We saw it on a mural in a temple. Are and you attempting to hide any information? No, I'm trying to like remember information. Okay. Like, I, I'm trying to not give away too much, but like just give him like general vague, vague answers, just okay. like he's giving to us. Okay. What are on what's on Clark's mind right now? He's considering consulting with the the shadow wave. Because he's out of his depth. Okay. Make a wisdom saving throw. Sure. Eight. Wait, uh eight. Okay. Yeah. Um, nine. Excuse me. As you <laughs> consider the question of the, the glaive's power and what it might have here. And might what it might have to say. You kind of come to f remember how you got the glaive and all the actions that have happened with the glaive recently almost as though they're coming to forefront of mind suddenly uh, but you're not bidding those memories to come forward the memory of how you came here um, a sort of comparison if you will of what your thoughts are um, and then you realize your mind is being gone through uh, like a sheaf of paper it's being flipped and Paragraphs are being read and flipped to a new, a new item, and paragraphs are being being noticed. Um, make an intelligence check. Sure. Uh, not very smart. Eleven. Eleven. Um, the, despite kind of being aware of that, you find yourself unable to change the channel as such, mm -hmm. uh, and those thoughts become more and more, to the surface. Um, you find yourself revealing your connection to Marius. And that starts to become the thread that the mind seems to be following through your mind once more. Um, make another intelligence check. Sure. Uh, Twelve. Okay. It's not as strong suit. You feel the connection fading, as if that there was some satisfaction and when you finally change them, what would be an innocuous thought that you would change your mind to if trying to deflect from these things? Um, probably thoughts of home, people he knows. Okay. People your father? Um, 
Less so, yeah. Okay. Sort of the more more the storefront than the than the man. Okay. As you find yourself kind of reliving, just walking down an average street in a queen, mm. uh, the presence seems to retract from your mind. We have made secure the levels below so that your kind would not go there. I can change this if you will help me. Help you do what? Discover what is the truth here. Discover the power. Find out where Imro's power comes from. And to what end? To become more than I am. Well, yes, everybody seeks deep self-improvement, but let's say you were to become much more powerful than you are now. What will you do? Destroy, the, destroy this world? Escape? And destroy I have things? no need to destroy things. I wish to become more powerful and leave this place. Well, it's not a bad goal. Uh, may I consult? Well, if I consult with my friends, you'll hear us anyway, but... We still don't know what you are. I am an Alhoun. Mm -hmm. Do you know more than you did before? Yes. Good. You may speak among your friends. I will hear only what I need to. Are you familiar with centaurs? That sounded kind of familiar. You take I only have, what they must, but... I have seen them before. They are uncomplicated, but beautiful. That's not the impression I had, but to each their own. Uh, anyway, <laughs> just give me a few moments. Uh, should we... And Elzer is the racist one. <laughs> well, I, I got mugged by a bunch of centaurs several times. I, I don't like them anymore. <laughs> so, uh, should we help him? Elhoons are somewhat dangerous. I don't know what his end goal is, but if you can help us, help us escape. Do you know what an Elhoon is? Didn't you, didn't you see one like uh, in the first quarter, or like going underneath the thing? No. Because like, or was that just a like regular mind flayer? That was just a mind flayer you saw before, an illithid. Would I have read about one in a book? Um, make a history check. Okay. Oh, wow. Thirteen plus, so I think that's twenty-three total. Yeah. Is it an aberration? Um, that's an interesting question. I wonder if it's classed as an aberration. It is not. Okay. Um, so. There's scarce records of Ilithid to begin with, um, and there's more. It's more of the myths that are about them, mm -hmm. um, and legendary stories. Um, the Ilithid are a collective species, all subservient. They th think to a collective mind. Alhun decide to go somewhat individually from that path, which is very anathema to most of what they would be uh, following. Uh, they seek out magics, and they seek out uh, dangerous transformations to become more than what they were, to grow as an individual. Okay. There is at least one legend which suggests that an Alhoun is actually what makes new minds, so that it could form its own collective. But it was a sketchy one to begin with from a sketchy yeah. source. But they do refer to Illithid. Good. I'm not going to mention the illithid part to uh, my friend. <laughs> I say, what is it? Only you understand. It's true. <laughs> like no question to the, to the to the GM. It's like, is it like an undead mud flayer or no, or like a different? Uh, there's no references to okay. undead in there, but it's also very scant references. Okay. You got a good roll, which gives you what you have, but there's a lot out there to know. Okay. They are very rare creatures. <laughs> like I take it you might have encountered that in a different system because I've never brought it up. No, it's like I've been reading this book, like War of the Spider Queen, anyway. Uh, and there's like an Alhoun in the first gotcha. book, and it's like, ah, oh, shit. That was not my character. <laughs> that was a fictional character. Because <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect you to know that name. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. Let's pick more obscure monsters. <laughs> so, uh, w Wind Whisper to Elzara. 
It's like a mind flayer, but not in, not a part of a collective, and I don't know about more dangerous, but potentially more dangerous. So a dangerous creature that thinks on its own. Yes. It could help us escape. And doesn't seem intent to on destroying anything. He just wants to improve himself, and I know they have a bad reputation, or at least I'm assuming they do if they're ill but but all I want to do is improve myself and become more powerful and more, and more knowledgeable, and I don't know. I, I can relate to it, but I don't quite trust it. I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm also probably less ugly, but but had I had the infection continued and not cleared up, I'm, I'm pretty sure I would have become one of those. I see. Meanwhile, while there's a lot of wind whispering going on, <laughs> what are the other two doing? Are they talking about us? No. Pijama uh, and Clark. The K's. Team K. <gasps> Kiki. <laughs> Clark looks to the kobold and says, it's fed by the water. Yeah, it's probably evil. Do you want to kill it? I'm half tempted. Hmm. What does the egg look like it's made of? Um, the upper part seems to have been structured out of some sort of metal and glass and stone, but as you get further and further down, it looks as though parts of that were replaced by uh, sort of a seaweed or vine with some organic elements like uh, more and more as it gets fed that, literally by the water. Is it the egg or the container that's holding the egg? Um, it all seems to be one thing. It doesn't seem to be separate pieces. Uh, I get nothing that can damage stone. Mm. I'm mostly a poisons person. But if you wedge something in that crack, you might be able to pop it open. Let's wait until the wizard figures out what he's going to do. Mm. I'm tempted to go down the stairs and find out what's further down. Or from is that the, underwater? From this floor on, all the stairs are underwater, yeah. Mm. Uh, it looks like it's been running for quite some while. Even though the water is not swiftly moving, um, it's mm -hmm. steadily moving. and has probably done so for quite some time. If it's been over 10 minutes, my fly spell is probably done now, too, right? This fly lasts 10 minutes yeah. or an hour? I 10 minutes. Um, yeah, we'll say at this point you drift slowly to the to the ground, okay. then kind of have to bend your head a little bit because the ceiling is... I was flying in a little ball, dude, and not touch the ground. Kind of. Okay. Hopefully that's not permanent. I don't trust it. Me neither. <laughs> but it, it said it can give us access to the floor below. And Auntie and Bone Twitch said she could help us. Yeah. What does it want in exchange? Freedom and to escape this place with us. Or to escape this place in general. That would probably be a terrible idea. Well, yes, but if we need access to the bottom floor, how can we get to it without getting infected? Do we need access to the bottom floor? It says there's some mechanism that Emeril left behind that it believes is what Emeril used to escape. Question. Mm. Clark would like to investigate the flow of water into the egg-shaped thing. Okay. How would he like to investigate that? Just as close as he can without getting bitten by it. Okay. Um. Specifically to see which direction the water is flowing. Is it flowing into the thing or off the thing? Is it the source okay. of the water? Make a perception check. Sure. Keep it simple. Uh, 17. Okay. I just need to... I'm trying to find exactly how long that thing lasts. Uh, I don't like this. <laughs> no, it's one of those weird things that I, I know that you're supposed to be large for a while. I just forget exactly how long that effect oh, okay. is supposed to last. I don't think I told you because I didn't see it. The large time. itself, I think, lasts a minute. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not. It's the kind of the effect of that, but I'm not sure if it actually meant to last a little longer. 
also in the shadow, so I mean it could be mm -hmm. who knows how well. Alright. Um roll a D twenty three times. Max. D twenty three times. So yep. I can roll three yeah, times. Nice. Fifteen plus seventeen, so twenty-five. Twenty-seven. No. Fifteen plus seventeen yeah. is thirty-two. Thirty-two. Yeah, that. And there was a third number. Hmm? What was the third one? Oh, he he no, added was, them together. Added that oh, that's all three. Okay. Thirty-two. Yes. Okay. So you can feel the effect. Hmm. Uh, you can feel the effect kind of slowly dissipating. Mm -hmm. Effectively, will last for thirty-two minutes. But we're going to just round uh, hand wave that, so it's already been going on for about yeah. ten minutes, um, because the fly spell has ended. But you're still tall for a while. Um, your total on the perception check was seventeen. Yeah. Okay. As you look at it and took a look, like a little closer to it, one of the things you notice right away as you get closer and closer to this water, you start to realize that the water itself is kind of, kind of an illusion, and that it's not just water. Um, it's more like the small uh, motions of the, the parasites moving through the water, with the water more as a vis viscous liquid that it's moving through. Mm -hmm. So there's this weird sort of semi-illusion of the fact that it's less water and more them. Mm -hmm. Definitely does seem to be moving inward to the, the egg, however. Okay. And it is flowing against gravity at that point. So I figured. Okay. Well... My friends don't seem to trust you, and I don't either, but uh, that doesn't mean anything. We can, if helping you so you can help us is the only solution, we may not have a choice, but uh, you, haven't, you haven't answered my question. Are you in the pod, the egg? Part of my essence is there, yes. And where's the rest of it? And uh, what does the water, the effect of the tainted water? I do not need to answer all of your questions. But it's helpful. And answer mine. What do you intend to do? We don't know. Why are you in the forest? We were looking for the... Can I tell him about the is heart this, of the forest? Is this out loud? Or he you already said that we're looking He's speaking for the heart out loud? That's what I thought. Um, and the responses are coming inside people's brains. Yeah. Okay. It's still transmitting, essentially, to all of you. It feels no reason that, to treat any of you like an individual, probably. Um, you've already said that we're looking for the heart of the forest. What about... And I'll just, like, nod towards the ring. <laughs> I'm not wearing the ring. Shit, I'm right. an air elemental. Towards... Anyway. Because I don't want to mention that part, because that part is, like, not mine to mention. But, <laughs> but if I'm thinking about it, it probably knows. Damn it. Anyway. Uh, we, we're not sure what to do yet. We're just uh, thinking about the possibilities. You know, there's, you said there was, like, writings all over the walls. Yes. Can I figure anything else about that, or was that the... You could take some time to study them. It's not something you can just glance at and figure out. But uh, I was wondering, is that what I looked at last time to figure out this was a clone about it? No, the thing itself? Yeah. Very clearly. Like, there's not a lot of things that look like this. Even as distorted as this one seems to be, um, it still has that, that distinct impression of being a humanoid shape and size, and there's only one purpose that you know of that's being I kind of buzz a little bit. <laughs> For it's how I ended up being able to speak with Spari. Oh, right, right. Okay. <laughs> there are similar pods in different places, that's true. Also, you do remember that there you are feeling the effects of the hum, even if it's only minor. If we were to help you, how would we do it? Just open this pod? Or can't you open it yourself once you're fully restored? If you would agree to help me, then I will join you. If you do not, I may have to convince you otherwise. We need to know... I, I, I'm going to say out loud. We need to know what he wants us to do specifically. Yes. And that, that's... His last statement sounded kind of like a threat as well, so... Yeah, but then again, everything in this world is, is threatening. I could ask you to help me and then... Uh, tell you that to help me, you have to kill your parents. Yeah, that would be most unfortunate. Right. <laughs> First example that came to mind. Mm -hmm. a, v a vague, you need to help me, yes, and I don't want isn't to help an agreement. 
if he wants to destroy the library, I, I would I wouldn't agree to that either. I don't want to say no to that. What? <laughs> There's a rather heated, airy conversation going on. No decision yet seems to be made. Uh, what would you expect of us if we were to help you? I need your knowledge of Imron. I could take some of it from your mind, but it would still take me a long time to understand it. Hmm. You would I... be useful to me alive. Well, I would be useful to me alive as well. Uh, <laughs> but the issue is that my knowledge of Emerald is... I'm assuming it's fairly incomplete. Your knowledge of magic is vast. So I, I teach you magic, and that's, that's it? It would not be fast enough. I would need you to understand what is below. What is below? There is... a circle. I do not know its purpose. Hmm. And below that, near the stone itself, there is some sort of construction. I am not familiar with its make. Construction. Can I figure out what he's talking about? No um, idea. He's, he's literally said what I've said, and there's yeah. not enough information. Because I'm assuming the circle is a teleportation circle, but... I will not let on to the fact that I know that. And they're all hearing this conversation too, right? Yep. Again, it doesn't seem to be treating you as individuals. Okay. Well, uh... Okay. Clark raises the, the shadow blade. Okay. Threateningly, or just you yeah, know, to he's, admire he's, it? Yeah, he's gonna commit to a death blow of some sort, as best he can. Uh, okay. Wait. Also, I don't know what happens when that happens. We haven't had that happen yet. Um, I think at the moment the queen you is... have one point of luck from it already. Mm. Um, it will be. I will reveal what happens when and if. When and if. Because yeah. isn't it currently both sides look the same? They do. So. Wait. But they have a difference to the player. Ah. So do I see him raise his glaive? Oh, absolutely. There's there's not that much space in here. Okay. <laughs> there is that much space like, wait, in here. What? <laughs> like a backswing. Like. Well, yeah, there's, it's a small room, so... Yeah. yeah. Wait, uh... He says he... He's probably gonna try to take over our minds and make us help him if we don't, but... Uh, it seems kinda hostile. That sounds like a triggering effect. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so Clark, will, Clark, Clark will take a swing. Alright. Uh, go ahead and take a swing. Alright. Um, As Clark's... Uh, blade moves down... That's swiftly. A, that's a crit. Ooh. Nice. I believe. Just double check in here. Uh, come on now. <laughs> Champion ability mm -hmm. crit on a 19. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, so and I'm you're total to hit? Uh, I think I'll move to the map screen. How about that? So they are in the central tower. 27? 27? Well, for, that's a hit. For counting totals. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, right, I gotta actually push the, put, the, push the live button. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh! Marky things. Let's clean up some of this a little bit. The crazy random notes. Oh, the cra crazy random notes. Here, someone have a. Oh, Is that a moon that's right. I think that was a moonbeam. Uh, possibly. Mm -hmm. The once in future moonbeam. Ah. Well. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, you can't see that egg on there. Twenty-three. Yeah, it is kind of white on white, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, how about? Do you have a green highlighter that I can? Probably do somewhere. Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, no, the base is being used. Um, Sorry, I'm like really big right now. Just like, yeah. Just enough to differentiate. To see it, yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's going to last much longer. I'm waiting for him to add up this long calculation. Uh, 27 
with some necrotic in there. Okay. Um, so you rear back just a little bit, a little tight space. At this point, it would be it would be the L shape, yep. not the full extended version. And whack, you hit down on this. Um, there is a loud ringing sound as the uh, glaive's um, uh, point uh, hits into some of the glass. The glass starts to shatter and, and scratch, and you kind of pull back, breaking open a space in there. Um, the thing does not, what shudders, does not uh, break in half, but it is a pretty significant uh, break in it. And let's see. Um, yeah, actually, everybody, uh, as the cr glass is cracked, a green glass flows out of the inside. Each of you make a constitution save. Green glass or green gas? Green gas comes out of the glass. Oh, what Son of a type of... It would be poison. Immune. Four. There you go. Four, okay. Or do I have extra time to react because I'm like 14 feet tall and I see the glass coming in? It, it fills the entire chamber <laughs> almost instantly. 17. 17. Four. 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 Mm -hmm. um, so the two fours fail. You take 11 points of poison damage. You take half, so you take five points. Um, as it just sort of explodes outward into the room. Um, there is a, a, a reaction instantly from within your minds. Just the, the, uh, the angry and somewhat disappointed betrayal. I'll just voice. thank you it. It's like, sorry about that. And we will roll initiative. <laughs> Everybody's like, can I roll it? Can I do it now? Yeah, you can. Ooh. I just wanted to talk to him and like... Uh, do you know what I always forget? Ooh, what? Initiative is based on dexterity. Yeah, it is. Which changes in my forms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does, yeah. I always forget that. Okay. That made that really good roll even better. All right, what do we got for initiatives? Uh, 20 to 25. 22. 22? Dirty 20. Dirty 20, all right. Already off to a crazy start. I like your shit. I think I without fail forget that. Uh, there you are. <laughs> 15 to 20. Uh, 10 to 15. 14. 14. Five to ten. Eight. Eight. Oh, yeah. Getting your guy unstuck from the thing. Well, I'm, I'm kind of waiting on the other two attacks I got as well. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you, your surprise attack. Do you get you get an attack or you get an action? I don't know. Was it a surprise? It, nobody expected it. That's for sure. Then it would have been a full. That would have been a full action. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll set this up and then you can go right ahead. Okay. With your other actions. Sure. Go right ahead oh. with your other attacks, I should uh, say. Also, betrayal. We never agreed to anything. 20, dirty to hit. Yep, that hits. Okay. You get the impression that this thing is very, very hard and well made, also magical. Gotcha. Um, not that it's moving at all. Uh, I don't need to roll two of those, sorry. I need to roll <laughs> one of those. This is not a crit critical attack thing. Um. Eleven, twelve, with some necrotic in there. All right. So that's the bonus from doing a crit. And if that was just the one attack, then I'm done. Uh, it'll be your, your attack action. The last one I rolled a one on. So okay. Probably, probably, probably just... So when it happens is, is you bring the, the blade down, it kind of skitters off one of the metal rings around the outside, kind of moving off, and you end up kind of embedding that into the stone of the wall, okay. knocking out a chunk, and some of the symbols disappear there as well. All right, uh, Elzera. Clearly, Clark has made his decision. And my main thing is keeping Clark safe. Aw. Fool. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> I try. <laughs> uh, so... Clark has made his decision, and I will make mine and go make 
um, my two slam attacks. Okay. Uh, first one is a 17, or 27. Do you want me to move That hits. 17, 27 um, different. Do you do additional damage to structures? Um, I do. Not in an air form. Not in an air okay. form, no. Uh, that's where they have the slam attacks often. That's what's referred to. Yeah. Uh, okay. So 2d8 plus 5. 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 5 is 11. Okay. Um, and then second attack is actually the same. Okay. Another 13 on the die. 4, 7, 8, 9 plus 5 is 14. Okay. Uh, and that is magical. Okay. So where uh, Clark had come down with the glaive and kind of started smashing through it, the second attack kind of breaking off some of the metal that was binding across the top, unless you were specifically aiming at the bottom part. No, I was just trying to break it. Um, and the third one kind of glancing off, you rear up both you know, both uh, airy hands and then just buffet this thing. And then first hit the uh, entire, uh, or the middle part, kind of the join between the organic and inorganic parts, crumples a little bit. On the second hit, the bottom half actually cracks away. And you see revealed there um, a uh, the legs of the creature that was inside. Um, wrapped up in cloaks, there's not much you can really see at this point, but you have cracked open this vessel. Cool. Zakis. Uh, I'll move to where I am. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we will replace the egg because it's not necessary. I thought there was going to be an egg pun in there. I really did. Oh, would you place that where the egg is? Essentially counts as partial cover for it still, but it can be getting around. What is Zakis doing? I'm moving farther away. Okay. To the back of the room, essentially. Yeah. Is it prone? Um, is the creature prone? It the would be considered... Prone. Yeah, prone. Okay. You can only see its lower legs, right? That's right. Okay. So, it's Zakis' turn. I'm only asking because of how the, the egg is... Like, it is leaning, yeah. It's meant to be leaning, so... Imagine, it kind of, I think I described it last time, as kind of the, the sort of fold-back beds, uh, or yes. lie-back beds. Well, I guess we're doing this. Firebolt. Firebolt, okay. So, that's a nine to hit plus. Wow. Plus eleven, so wow, twenty. That hits. And I forget how many D tens or some. At least some. Yes. <laughs> Maybe not all. Okay. Hey. Hmm. Twenty seven. Nice. Rolled all nines. Okay. Are you moving? Are you moved a bit already? Yeah. Are you moving any further? No. Am I back against the wall right now? Or yes. Okay. Especially in your size. Yeah. And I don't want to go like outside where the water is. Okay. Uh, it's turn. Um. There is a sound that kind of reverberates like the background. Uh, of an echoing cavern, but inside your minds at this particular point. So I'm going to check on this particular spell. Um, mm -hmm. Any targets? Um. Oh. Hmm, that's interesting. We'll try that one next. Maybe we'll see what this works. Um, and the ground around you starts to shake and rumble. And then uh, the brackish water seems to flow a little bit around through the, the water, or through the, the floor, and then erupt and erupt and erupt in several tentacles that in, enter the area. Oh, fun. Um, you are now surrounded, and it fills pretty much this entire room, surrounded by these large, writhing tentacles. That seemed to be, in a way... No, it's the entire room. It's a 20-foot radius. <laughs> Centered on this room, it captures the entire room. Uh, 
that seem to be kind of obscuring your view as well as as uh, uh, as well as threatening you. Uh, that's that's turn, um, but he will move. He's going to be moving to stand up now, mm-hmm. and moving without any effort. Egg with legs. I <laughs> know. No, he's sliding at the bottom oh, of the okay. thing. Uh, and then. That would be amazing. That would be hilarious. Uh, let's see. What would y'all name an egg? Eggbird. Seems a little done. Um, <laughs> I just clued into that. Wow. It's, it's, it's over too easy. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, he'll take the risk. Uh, he'll start walking out towards the door to the water. I believe you'll have an opportunity attack. Cool. Uh, I do as well. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, right. You you're, go first. you're probably closer. <coughs> Can you still get rid of the water for us? <laughs> Uh, that is a 11. 11? Okay. Unfortunately, he's a little more swift than you expect. Almost totally. seems like he floats. Uh, 18 over here, though. Okay. And as you swing down, you kind of pull back and hook across him. How much damage do you do? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, I will need to know the necrotic separately. Sure. Uh, 5 and 2 necrotic. Okay. Oh wait, uh, I guess, sorry. Uh, nine and two are necrotic. Okay. Uh, there are the strength see. in there. Yep, oh, almost. There you go. All right, as you kind of catch the edge of this, and you expect to get more resistant, it's almost like the body is, is thinner underneath the uh, flowing. Now you can see full body robes uh, flowing. The, the uh, illithid face that you had expected is a little bit different. It's gaunter and grayer, with larger tentacles than you might have seen before, um, as well as kind of this this flow of cloth around. The cloth itself almost seems moth-eaten and 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 torn up and shredded, as though it's it's weathered a long time, perhaps even in stasis. Okay. But it continues moving. I don't think you have sentinel or whatever the feed was. Mobile, no. There's nope. a feat that stops their movement? Nope. Okay. Uh, then they will go to the door and step onto the water. So move them out the door. Y'all need to fuck off, buddy. Uh, no, out the door. Where, uh, where oh, that door. Kushan is standing. So right there and put its foot in the water. Uh, where'd my dice go? Okay. Uh, Kujima, it is your turn. The thing has moved around you uh, because it's the beginning of your turn. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw. 22. 22. You managed to avoid the writhing tentacles that are surrounding everybody in this room. Uh, this is still difficult terrain. Yep, otherwise you're un, you're unrestrained from it. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, how big is it? Normal humanoid size, okay, so medium. medium. Okay. Uh, I tell my minions to attack it. Okay. They crowd four to a square, two <laughs> on each side, so all seven can hit them. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I will have you make a dexterity saving throw for half. You get to choose which half because they'll end up standing in the water to get close to him. Uh, is he? He's literally stepping in the water right now, right on the edge, because there's a pool pool that flows in through that. Uh, okay. Through the door. Well, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So okay. None of mine so are in half the of them will be in the. It's a it's a virtual map. It's not going to be exact here. So what I'm saying is because of the way the space is, okay, he's effectively sure. giving himself cover with the water. Uh, it'd be nice if we could see where the water actually was. Then uh, it's on the map as close as I could get it. With a, they have plus three dexterities. Okay. okay. That's a twenty-two and an eight. Okay. And an eleven and a seventeen. Okay. The eight is the only one that fails. It takes two points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Um, okay. 
I'll just roll two of them at a time. Uh, they have plus five attack. Plus five attack? Holy moly. That's a fairly basic attack for, um, like, skeletons and such. Okay. Uh, 17 and 20. Those both hit. Okay. 20 and 23. Okay, both hit. 19 and 23. <laughs> okay. And 15. 15 just hits. What kind okay. of damage is it? Uh, Non-magical blunt. Okay. As much as they beat away at the at the base of his feet, it does not seem to affect him. Okay. Well, let's see. Then Kuzaima will try to stab him with a silver dagger. Okay. Uh, he'll dual weapon it actually. The non or the main attack, nineteen. That's a hit. Second attack, 15. That's a hit. Uh, they're silver, but otherwise non-magical. Okay. Do I roll for damage? No. Okay. So the stabs go in, but appear to, to just pierce, but do no effect to it. It is surprised and alerted to the crazy number of things that just happened to it, though. Okay. I'm done. All right. Radix, who is back up the hallway. Uh, huh. Might be able to take a shot. Kind of leaning somewhat around the corner, uh, flicks her finger and, and thorns appear. Uh, thorn, let's see. All right, somebody want to make attack rolls for her? Plus seven? Okay. There's a two plus seven. That's not enough. And 18 plus seven. I'm that's definitely a hit. 14 plus seven. Uh, that's a hit as well. So roll me a d4 for each attack. <laughs> one on both? Yeah. Okay. That's Double still. That's. Oh. Alright. As the thorns kind of sink into its robes, but it does seem to visibly react and shrink from, from the wounds. Uh, Clark, you're up. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> right. Clark is going to try to charge and step. You are standing in the room, so dexterity saving throw first. Sure. Probably fail. Yeah. Uh, six. Six, that is a fail. You're restrained by the tentacles as they wrap around you. Okay. Uh, where's my dice? Oh, you're lucky that's caught. Mm -hmm. oh, didn't matter. Uh, that's 17 bludgeoning damage. Ouch. Okay. As they start wrapping around you and then start to squeeze, uh, holding you fast and firm. Now, you can't move. Um, you can still attack if you have range, though. Uh, <clears throat> how far are we away? He'd be on the 15 foot. Okay. Uh, Clark will spend a charge. Uh, the glaive will grow to meet him. Okay. Uh, There's another three. Don't uh, eleven. Okay. Eleven. Unfortunately, the nice. as as it grows, you find it even harder to move around these tentacles, and it kind of ends up slashing into a ten tentacle, which gets slashed, falls away, and another one immediately grows up to re replace it. All right. Uh, then I guess he'll try to sweep the area around him as safely as he can without uh, guillotining anybody. All right. So as to free himself. Um. Oh, the attacks are also made at disadvantage, too, by oh, the way. Never mind. Sorry. Well, I would have failed on You would have failed anyway, but just something to keep in mind. Yeah, for sure. Uh, make an attempt, but it will be at disadvantage. Natural one. Natural one. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw. Is this for the beginning of my turn? Nope. This is for the, for the glaive, which is now spinning in your direction. Cool. Uh, that is a 17. 17. You managed to kind of or fold 18. yourself... So that the air is no longer you that the glaive passes through in, in his attempt to try to uh, grade a space around him. The only thing he managed to do is kind of make use of new flinch a little bit. Uh, do you have another attack, or is that your second? I that's it. Okay. Uh, background top to Elzera. Uh, you are in the area. 
Uh, I am immune to you restrained. Restrained, but you're not immune to being bludgeoned. Cool. <laughs> so you still got to make the dexterity saving throw. Tentacles can grab air. Yeah. Uh, that's a nine. But if it has to restrain you... It doesn't. Make... It's just bludgeoning damage. Okay. And then it also restrains you. Okay. I described the, the, it as, the way, as squeezing. The way you did it yeah. the other way was um, implied the other. Yeah, no. Uh, that is 16 points of bludgeoning damage. Magical? Uh, yes, because these are magically summoned things. They do not exist without magic. Um, as the, the tentacles tempt to grab you, and instead of grabbing you, just sort of end up sp splitting you up into multiple little pieces. It takes you more to reconstitute yourself. Okay. But you are not restrained, so you have free movement. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go up to Buddy. Okay. Mm. So we want to move. Alzara. Up to Buddy. Up to Buddy. Um, That's the official term. I am flying, so can make sure I'm not touching the water. Okay. Um, and I am going to basically try to hit him. So okay. I'm sure he's basically not going to want to be hit. Actually, um, yeah, no, I'll just hit him. Uh, that's a 16 on the dice. That hits. And that is a 13 on the dice. Plus 8. 13 plus 8. So that's... 20, yeah, 20 plus. 13 plus 8. No, that's 21. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that's 2 hits. Okay. So... Oh, that, that, that was my second attack. I was just going to roll everything at once. Hmm? That, that wasn't damage. That was... Oh, that wasn't damage. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was just m both my attacks because I've been playing a lot of AL. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, eight, then 16, 17, plus 10, 27. Yeah, that is. Oh, wait, is that damage? I can't remember. Dam that is damage. <laughs> I lost track now. Okay. That is the damage. All right. I've gotten used to rolling both my attacks and then just all the damage at once. That's, that's fair. Just let me know. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not confused. More than usual. <laughs> uh, those are my two attacks. That's my move. Um, I'm also going to, as a bonus action, use a level one spell slot to heal myself a bit uh, for four. Hmm. Uh, ooh, that was close. Okay. You see him waver for a moment, and all the tentacles go still, and then continue their motion. Cool. Didn't quite break his concentration, which is pretty scary. Um, and so you, sorry, you moved or you didn't do any more? I Stay healed with, myself healed yourself, okay. with my mm -hmm. ability. Mm -hmm. uh, I still hit him a bunch, even if I did no damage. He should have had to make concentration it, He's immune to that kind of damage, so it doesn't do anything to him. It's when you take damage that you yeah. make concentration Okay, saves. yeah. You only take, it's only, yeah, it's only when you take damage and not get hit. However, it is uh, Zacchaeus' turn now. How bad does he look? I mean, I know he looks pretty ugly. I mean, like, annoyed is probably a good way to start. Okay. Um, he's been battered around a bit. The probably the wind did the most immediate damage to him in one strike, anyway. Do I gotta make a dexterity saving throw right at the beginning? Or? If you're standing there, yes. So. Thirteen plus one, so fourteen. Fourteen. That is not enough. So you take uh, twelve points of bludgeoning damage, and you are restrained. I'll cast that Dispel Magic in the center of the room at level 4. Okay. Let me just double check on that. Uh, dispel Magic. How about we have no more tentacles? What is the... Is that same level or below? Or mm -hmm. only ones that are below that level are automatic? Same level or below. Okay. Yeah. What level do you cast it at? Uh, it's a level 4. four so anything spell level 4 or below. Okay. Uh, is automatic. Sure, I'll have him try that. Let's see here. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, that's weird. Okay, I gotta check something. Because it's it's not symmetrical for some reason. Mm -mm -mm. I just looked at this. Uh, no, you're probably right. I just need to check something for my own self as well. Uh, you actually have to roll if it's fourth level. Or, 
Mm-mm. Oh no, okay. So if it's higher than that skill, okay. Gotcha. Because I looked gotcha. at the spell, but I didn't look at the level of the spell because I'm smart. Right <laughs> so that one would need to be that. Okay. So your skill level was was a four. Mm-hmm. I was just looking at it. Where to go? Uh, you find that as you cast Dispel and push away the magic, uh, there is a, just a look through the tentacles as they're wavering back and forth, as you catch the eyes, the sort of sunken, sullen eyes of the creature, and it just squints a little bit harder at you, and you find the, temp- the, the magic you spell dissipates. The what dissipates? The other Your magic dissipates. What? As he counterspells it. Mm-hmm. Can I counterspell his counterspell? Uh, no, you're already casting a spell. <laughs> no, uh, no <laughs> counterspell can be cast after you cast a spell. You can counterspell a counterspell against your own fireball. It's the uh, it's the actual okay. definition of it. It's using your reaction. Yeah. yeah. All right. that, that's that's weird. Mm-hmm. It's a weird thing, uh, because but... Because technically you're already in the process of casting the spell, which means you would be counterspell... Yeah, okay. Go for it. Oh, counterspell is counterspell. Uh, all right. Uh, it's like, squint back. <laughs> Actually, it, it, it ends the counterspell. Because you're, 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 what level of counter, you're counter, counter counterspell? At least level third, three level. Yeah, right? level yeah. no, it, it immediately cancels the counterspell. So, <laughs> just spin our heads a little bit more. Uh, do mark off the spell, though, because that is yeah, lost. Sounds um, like a dual as I use the three. Just squint. Yeah, there's determination on both sides. He he uh, he casts a counter spell, and then the the tentacles caught in the grass with this this mental confusion uh, proceed to uh, proceed to then dissipate and vanish immediately. Let's see his turn now. Can I ask a question? Sure. The end result of that battle of wills mm-hmm. is that all the effects that were still are. Yes. No. The the one no the the spell that was cast in the room the tentacles is gone. Yes. Okay. Nobody's restrained. Good to know. Because yeah. Clark has a magical weapon that's doing something right now, so that might be affected by big fields of anti magic. Is what I'm saying. No, it's not. No, it's not, not, it's not a global thing. effect. It's okay. just a singular, okay. singular okay. reaction yeah. to the effect. Gotcha. We used to think it was, but it's not. Good to know. Hmm. It's not an anti magic field. He's got a point. And that thing doesn't work specifically. Okay. If it's on a person, and for example, they have a bunch of stuff that's causing them to stop only one thing. Uh, for example, if I were to cast okay. Monster Rider and Freedom of Movement, it would lose one of them. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Uh, it'll work. Um, somewhat, actually, after that moment of uh, that moment of, of Battle of Wills, there is a sort of begrudging and actually appreciative look across its face. It's sort of like, it's sort of like. Ooh, uh, I was right. You are as smart as I wanted to take. All right. Let's see. Let's do this then. Is it better if I blow up like all my dangerous uh, spells before he takes control of me? Or? And then uh, gesturing. Yeah, gesturing. And again, you kind of hear that that buzzing voice in your mind. It it reaches out uh, with hands and tentacle towards the center of the room. So the center of where actually where all you're standing. Uh, and from there, there is a a wisp of of. Uh, of water kind of breaking off in droplets and spinning around. Uh, each of you make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom. Fail. 11. 13. 11. What was yours? 14. 14. Uh, and for the creatures as well, your little critters. Mm. 16, because I forgot to add my proficiency bonus. Oops. Uh, is it causing charmed, frightened, paralyzed, petrified, or poisoned? That's what I'm just checking. If it's charmed, they're immune. Charmed. It doesn't say anything about charm, so I'm going to assume it's not. Okay. It is enchantment, which is weird, but technically not charm. Let's see. I need to apply it zero. So. Um, can you just know what the difficulty is? 16. Okay. Just Succeeded, failed. Uh, three failed. One well, got natural twenty. Nice. Three succeeded. Four failed. Three succeeded. Okay. So for those of you who fail, which is everybody, go to sixteen or uh, go lower than sixteen. 
Uh, you are confused as the little little uh, bubbles of, of, of liquid seem to catch your attention and spin your mind around. When you start your turn, you cannot take reactions. When you start your turn, we'll roll a d10 to see what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he's going to back away into the water as well um, for uh, the creatures that were not affected. They would get a chance to strike or follow, but they won't Doesn't hurt matter. he's going to strike. Are they going to follow him? No. Okay. Well, they don't get to anyways. Okay. He's going to step backward then uh, into the water and start to move towards the edge of the stairs. So move him back uh, cautiously. How this far? Uh, Which one is the stairs up? Stairs down is here. That's the stairs down, yeah. Is that where he wants to be? That's where he wants to be. Okay. Uh, and how far is his movement? Uh... Because that was only 15. It's going to be 15. He'll start moving down the stairs another 15 then. So he's he's moving away as quickly as he can. And getting deeper, deeper and deeper into the water if with each step. Alright. Uh, that's his turn. Kujima. Five. Five. You don't move and don't take any actions. You're stymied for the moment. Mm -hmm. Now you can make a wisdom saving throw. Nope. No. Good. Nine. For the first one. Uh, can act and move normally. Okay. It stands there. <laughs> Four. Uh, does not move or take actions. Five. Same. Two. Same. Okay. Uh, and you can have them make wisdom saving throws for those that are there. Oops. Nope. Okay. Um, Radix, was outside of the domain of this, is going to try to move around all of that stuff. She has enough movement. She's going to take it slow. Where so she'll it? move... Oh, no, she still won't make it around. She's going to move towards where the door is. She basically here. Yeah. And she's taking it slow, so there's no no danger, danger walking in the water. Uh, and she's looking around trying to figure out what's going on because she has no idea what just happened. Um, Clark. I rolled a one. You use all your movement to move in a random direction. Sweet. Roll a d8. Uh, assigning... Uh, that way as one. Seven. The other way. So two, so three, four, five, one. six, seven. Mm -hmm. This one way. One back on the other side. Okay. So you move right to the wall. Cool. Uh, you don't take an action. You do roll your wisdom save, however. Yeah, will do. Uh, wisdom is going to be an 18. Okay, you shake off the effects of the confusion. Uh, but find yourself on the other side of the room where you didn't remember being. Right. Uh, Elzera. D10. Uh, yep. Eight. Eight. You use your action to make a melee attack against a randomly determined creature within its reach. Oh no. <laughs> uh, that's Kuzima, because there's only the creature. Uh, or is critters, actually. How many critters do you have? Seven. Seven, so make a d8. Seven. Okay, so the, the sixth of your creatures. And that is a 15 to hit. That hits. And that's. 14 damage. Mm -hmm. Look. As you swiftly reach down and kind of just catch something. You're, you're not sure what it was, but you finally hit, hit something. And then... I mean, I have been hitting. <laughs> and make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, that is a 14. That's a success. Yeah. So you are now no longer confused, and you can count one less of the tiny little creatures dancing around because I'm a feet. Oh, shit. Splat. Hmm? Uh, one less creature around your feet because one of yours just went because splat. Which one was it? Another one or no, no, no. just the one. Okay, she just came to realize it. But what one was mm -hmm. it? It was a candle. Okay. As a candle gets knocked over and sent across the room, snuffed out by wind. No, uh, gets <laughs> splattered into wax. Oh, oh. hot wind. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, You are not confused. Nope. But you did see it kind of zip on down the hallway. Yeah. Are the droplets still spinning around? It, the effect is still in the area, yes, 
but because you saved, you're not affected by it. Okay. I will get out of the area and go... So it's like here all water except for that one spot? Or? Yeah, there's one little spot there and then it becomes to be all water. It's basically the surface of the water is even with the top of the stairs at that point. Okay. And when people had like... When we were in the tunnels before, when we were like just you know up to our knees in the water, mm -hmm. nothing bad happened, right? Um, not at that point, no. Okay. But you did see the unicorn appear just about there and was almost instantaneously attra attacked by these things. Right. Being a creature supposedly of pure good, that may have also accelerated their their interest in it. But good eats. That's, yeah, good eats very well. Is that Alton Brown? So, what would you like to do? I'm not sure. I will go up to here, like, where there's not water. Okay. Oh, so sure. it's difficult terrain once you step into a square that has water. Right. Which means it's twice as much movement in that square. Or you can move at full speed, but you make a risk, because you have to roll to see if you bounce around right. I'm going to go back here, like, next to Radix, okay. where it's less watery. One. Or how much movement do I have now that I'm like still 14 feet tall? Uh, strangely, movement's not affected. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will take it slow and be... Do I even fit there? Oh yeah, you, you fit. Again, it's, you're kind of cramped in you're everywhere. Crawling. Well, technically he's a 2 by 2 square creature yeah. <laughs> trying to go up one square so uh, wide That's stairs. What I, mean. So. I mean, it, yeah. It, there's enough space around that particular space to be there, but... Going up and down the stairs, you are going to have to kind of squeeze and move as you are. Because that's your base there. Yeah. yeah, move the base with you maybe to get an idea of just how difficult it is. Actually, you can't move through there because there's two creatures that are, are standing there. If you were normal size, you can move through them, but otherwise you can't. Although, your air, maybe that would be fine. Actually, your air and your small. Well, Never mind. That's well, not really a problem. Well, so we're allies. Yeah. You can always move through an allies square. Uh, if they aren't occupying all of the space. Yeah. You can't move through a giant that, space. That's uh, not in the rules. Okay. So what would you like to do? Would you like to squeeze out there in the hallway or... And now the confusion effect, is it like in the entire room? Yeah, they're basically, well... Where Clark is, he's actually out of the range of it just barely, but it's a 10-foot radius from that point in the center of where you all were. Okay. I'll go to where Clark is to avoid the confusion. Okay. Because there's nothing I really can do. I mean, you're already not succumbing to it. Yeah. And you can't return to being succumbing from it. You're immune to it once, oh, okay. once you succeed. I didn't know that part. Yeah. yeah. I'll go as close to the entrance as I can, I guess. Because, like, no matter where I go, I can't, like, target him or... Right now he's trying to flee, so... Right. Yeah, I'll stay there. Okay. I could cast Fly on myself and, like, go in a small corner down the stairs, but if he, like, drops my Fly, I fall right in. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you stop there, um, you don't hear, but you suspect that uh, the Alhun Bezetsi is continuing on down the stairs, probably now fully submerged. Um, we will drop out of initiative, unless you have something specific you think you want to do in terms of initiative, but effectively he's been able to get away. Um, leaving you in this room with the half-broken pod yeah. and the weird water. Now the pod, bottom half of the pod is broken. The the water that was leading up to those tendrils is now starting to dry up and pull back as they're no longer feeding anything. Mm. So, what would you like to do? I'll inspect the pod. Okay. I'm going to keep an eye on this door. Okay. No sign of motion at the moment. Um... Make an Arcana check as you look closer to the pod. 17 plus 4. 31. 31. Because of the way that the bottom part is sort of rebuilt, it looks as though the pod was already destroyed once yeah. and then kind of put back together. Um, because that, that spirit battery at the back was also broken, it didn't have its normal charge of en energy. 
you're looking at this and going, I have no idea why he wanted to be in there. This pot has already been used, it's broken, it has no power, it probably didn't understand what it was there for. So more or less, it was wrong about what it was trying to do with it. Okay. It does show signs of having been used, however, at least once. Um, you're seeing, again, those same sort of runic carvings, similar to what you'd seen before, so you can easily identify a similar style to what Imro would use. Okay. So he definitely built this. But the power is gone. The base is busted. So Bazetsi was probably not knowing what to do with this thing. Cool. Okay. Which further indicates why he was so interested in your knowledge. While powerful, he doesn't know what this stuff is. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> So Emerald probably probably built this. Actually, no, Emerald did build this. It's been used before. ZZ was using it wrong. And as I say that, I wonder, can you hear me? Oh well. You're not sure of the range. Of that. Do I still feel uh, the effects of the hum? Oh yes. Is the star piece like anywhere in the pod, or is it below? As you look closer at the metal and kind of inspect it, um, the metal appears to have those small, sparkly nature but there's no power in the metal itself. Whatever power was here was either expended during the usage of the pod or just beaten out of it maybe when they made the pod. It's hard to say the process exactly. But definitely that's one of the few metals you've even seen here. Um, the glass-like substance also probably was summoned more than created. It doesn't look like there's any sort of glass blower here that you've seen. All in all, looking at it, it is it matches the sort of style you've seen of magic items like this, or that or that you've heard of from this. The fact that it was built here with almost no tools, but maybe an infinity of time, means that not only did Emerald think it was important, uh, Emerald spent maybe a hundred years building this thing, or maybe two hundred years, if you can measure time. So, the room is quiet once more. Radix is kind of looking down the hallway carefully, has has a couple of thorns in her fingers ready to throw, but I don't see him. He's escaped below where we can't follow. Unless we could somehow clear all this water. Um... I don't know anything like that. <laughs> but do any of you know how to move the water or, or stop it from flowing or something could we block up that hole possibly we can't but the Glomkins might be able to if we can just communicate with them I've been uh, unsuccessful so far and I'll like rub my face where I got punched by one so what do we do are we done here? Well, we can't be. There's a little bit of hope in her, in her voice. This place has definitely spooked the crap out of her. Clark's, then again, arguably everything does. Clark stands confused. And somewhat frustrated. Mm hmm. I don't know how long the confusion lasts. Uh, at this point, it would have worn off because he's, he's way out of range to maintain the spell, plus, it's only lasts a minute. Not really. It's, Actually, you were already still, outside of the, con the confusion effect. He's still confused. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But it's his own. <laughs> he is still confusion. confused. He's just no longer in confusion. Mm. Uh, Radix looks at you with a bit of curiosity. I've never known water to be flammable. I thought it was the opposite of flammable. It puts this, out flames. This water is different. I can't do anything about that, but if you know some way of doing it, can somebody fetch that for me? I'll try. Uh, Thank you. Is there a piece of, or a little tiny puddle that's not connected to the rest of the uh, water? Uh, there's the drying up uh, sort of river that was going to the uh, pod itself. Okay. It does seem to be kind of retreating, no longer forcing that direction, but there's a little bit of water there. Okay, but if it's if it's like a small puddle and not connected to the rest of the water, because I don't want to like, if it, if it happens to be like mixed with oil, I don't want to end like... <laughs> um, it, it is still connected. Okay. Um, you could... Maybe scoot some of it out of the way with your staff or something. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, you effectively break the, the water. It does seem to sort of still want to move in that direction, but it's very slow on its own. 
firebolt it g gently. Okay. Gently? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it has a gentle sense. Okay. I mean, uh, it's kind of like on or off with okay. the flamethrower. All right. Uh, make it a hit roll. Not 20. Okay. You uh, send the fire in the middle of this water, and it sort of hisses and, and steams. There's this sort of sound of... Um, of uh, the steam, like steam escaping from a mollusk when you're boiling it, sort of as it sizzles and, and floats away, as you boiled that water away. You didn't burn it, but you boiled it away. Okay. And it behaved like regular water does. No, not at all. Door? Not okay. at all. It looks as though it tries to squirm, and, and normal water does not hiss like that. But there's nothing left of it when you're done. It's almost like it's alive. It is. Can you? We've experienced this. Yes. We can't just... I wonder if it's sentient. We can just, like, ask it to go away. Unless... In Primordial, I will whisper to the water to go away. <laughs> uh, make a persuasion roll. 18. You're pretty sure you made a really convincing argument, but it didn't seem to listen to anyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, we never know. What if the water is sentient? In in D and D, try all the things. You never know. <laughs> and the DM may also go. You know what? Why not? In this case, no. no. Well, a water elemental is sentient, and it's made of water. Anyway. So, what are you doing? We've made a thing mad. Yes. We need to end that thing. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we'll, we're probably past the point of negotiating with it. Maybe. You did notice a grudging respect in its eyes when yeah. you managed to counterspell its counterspell. It still seems to have respect for the power and the knowledge, at least. Yeah. It would still be interesting. It may want to see the rest of your friends strung up, I'm not sure. But. Or, you know, after it has use of all my knowledge, probably me as well. Probably. To be fair, from the stories you've heard, it would probably just eat your brain at that yeah. point. <laughs> Do not want. Yeah. Um. I'm just like waiting to see what everybody else does because I don't want to go in this water, and there's no nowhere yeah, for us to really go. The Glumkins would have to somehow plug whatever hole is leaking from it. Do I see in the hall where the water is coming from? Oh yeah, uh, up there, just you can see there's a dark line along one wall. Okay. There's just a gash in the wall where the water is flow trickling in from. And it has probably been doing so for a long time. It's not a huge gash. It's about two feet tall, only about a foot and foot and a half wide. Does it look like it was like it's a crack or is it? Yeah, it's more like something removed That's rock from it. Um, it's not a big stretch to assume that it was probably one of the Glompkins. They fucked it up. They should fix it. Um, no, it was, it was more of a, if it's a crack, mending will work. If it's right. something that was removed, mending won't work. And this would be too big for mending to have an effect as well. Yeah. Um... Clark will sit and ponder, uh, consult with the glaive. Okay. Are you actually consulting with the glaive? I'll attempt to. Okay. Um, what do we have on there? Is there, I forget if it's a roll or if it's just an expenditure mm -hmm. or if it's just a... It's roll by face. Okay. Okay. It's not associated with power in any. What are you asking up to him or asking them? Well, he just wants to know what to do next. If he's supposed to be bringing balance to the shadow, then point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the glaive itself you don't think has any consciousness of its own, but the many voices that are within it start to clamor for attention. Yeah, um, in. Uh, make a wisdom saving throw. Sure. Um, Fifteen. Okay. Um, you start to try to make sense of the different voices that are, are running through um, in your mind. Mm 
um, trying to pick out which ones. There's a clamor for attention, almost as though each of them, desperate to have a connection to the real living world, uh, wants to be the one to respond to your question. But you quickly start weeding them out. Uh, this one talks about uh, court protocol. And you're pretty sure that that's going to have nothing to do with what you want right now. Another one starts talking about uh, you know proper care and use of weapons, a soldier, former soldier, in a routine that's familiar to you. And for a moment, that feels like an attractive one to talk to. But you quickly realize they have no idea what's really going on here. Mm. Um, after about five minutes um, of sorting through these voices, there's a small voice that you find uh, kind of instinctively drawn to. Um, and before you kind of visually standing, almost ghost-like, only you can see uh, a uh, gnome, about two and a half feet tall, looks pretty elderly, his back is bent, um, long, tapered, white beard, uh, ears with uh, white, white hair sprouting out of the ears, um, leaning on a, on a cane. What you have here is a classic plumbing problem. I used to work up north, where the waters are strongest, and when the ice starts to melt in summer, everybody's house floods. It's a mistake. They should never have put their homes there. Really. <sighs> but it kept me busy for many years, figuring out ways to channel the water around to make sure that it flows elsewhere, to just simply solve these simple basic problems that any smart gnome should know. None of them were smart gnomes, but I was a very smart gnome. It seems to me you start with getting rid of the source. Fill that hole up. Anything will do. Water is actually remarkably good at forming bonds that'll make almost a cement-like thing. So if you start with dust and dirt and start piling up on top of that heavier rocks to give it pressure, that'll solve it from flowing. As for what's down there, well... I had my knowledge about this place, and I don't know where we are. Where are we? Doesn't matter. Looks like a tower. I don't know why the basement of your tower is flooded, but it doesn't matter. Built it too deep, probably on a floodplain. It's the ceiling. Oh. Doesn't matter. It probably will drain in time. If you've got time. A whole season might take, depending on what's down there. If not, uh, well... Are there more rooms like this down there? Unknown. Uh, yeah. How long can you hold your breath? <laughs> Not long enough. Yeah. Well, if you have somewhere else for the water to go, it will probably go there. If you don't, well, there are magics to move water. It's cheating, if you ask me. Aside from that, well, this room seems fairly large. You can probably back the water into this room if you've got a proper pump system. Do you have a proper pump system? Of course you don't. Nobody does. They never listen to me. Stock up, I tell them. All right. Well, we can work with what we've got. Too we'll real. <laughs> and uh, he starts laying out plans that require a lot of bits and pieces, essentially to build a sump pump, a manually operated sump pump. Um, you people have some magical ability. Uh, this is all being described to Clark, so you'd have to tra tell them what it's about. But there may be a way to build something which would move the water up, essentially using this as a cistern. If it's not already draining from below. Okay. Nice to meet you. You're nicer than the last one. You seem to actually understand things. Last one just sort of gnashed his teeth and never wanted to listen to anybody. Also, you're less hairy. I have a job to do. Thank you. Oh, you're leaving so soon? I'm sure I could tell you more. I've got some great uh, plumbing stories. And there was this uh, rich king once who had oh, this. Clark will try to sever the connection. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> and it kind of just sort of fades away. What did he was talking about? The king of a tour. Clark picks up the glaive, stands up, and starts walking towards the the stairwell, going back up. Okay. I'm searching uh, while he's doing that. I'm at. I've gone up to the wall of rocks, and I'm looking, trying to find a rock that's thin enough for me to jam into. Most of the rocks are relatively small, like yeah. fist or double fist size. 
So and most of it was composed of just tiny rocks, one little bit at a time. Yeah. Um, so the ones I'm on the bottom like were crushed collect, and small. I, I'm going to like pick one up and put it into me and just, just to carry as many as possible. <laughs> okay. The strength in that form, I think, is pretty high, right? Yeah. Yeah, so um, I'll say that after about... 10 uh, 14. To, 10 or 15. Oh, okay, it's so. not quite as strong as I expected. About 10 or 15 minutes, you're kind of gathering an arm load of rocks. Some of them are dropping down the stair behind you, or in front of you, I guess. Am I still 14 feet tall? Uh, for the moment, yes. Okay, so I will help with any rock moving that has to be done. Because okay. I feel like, super strong right you now. You do actually get, get a strength bonus out of that. <laughs> yeah, but you have trouble with the stairs. <laughs> yeah. You are kind of doubled over quite a bit uh, to manage it. So um, I can make myself squeeze it. So the two of you are gathering rocks, you're walking back up. Is Kujima doing anything in particular? Nope, just waiting to find out if there's anything he can do to help. Okay. So, you've got the rocks. As, as you start walking up the stairs, you see the two of them kind of carrying rocks. Probably had a similar idea, at least to the beginning, of what that plumber was talking about. Mm. Gnomish plumbing. Always trusted. He walks over to the cage. Okay. So you went all the way back up to the next level. Okay. Uh, you see... Uh, he brings a weapon off the rungs okay. of the cage. Ah, making music, are we now? <laughs> Still alive, that's good. It's better than a few. Yeah, well... <clears throat> need your help. Ah, that's music. What can I do for you? I'll set you free. I need poison. Poison? Mm, barrels and barrels of it. Barrels and barrels of poison. That's a little difficult, but uh, any particular poison? Something that kills a squid-faced monster. Oh, well, that won't work. They aren't bothered by poison. What are they bothered by? A few things. Let me just check here and make sure I know what I'm talking about. Some magics are best, not all. They don't. They aren't best bothered by cold, or sparks. Death doesn't seem to bother them too much either. Some of them just seem to keep going on and on. But I can help with um, a little bit of direct death if that's what you're interested in. No, nope, that's good. Corvo, we'll walk back downstairs. Okay. <laughs> so about that freedom. No. Clever boy. Yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> Clark walks downstairs. Sure. Sits down. Okay. Goes at it again. <laughs> at it again? Yeah. Okay. Trying to find another channel. All right. What are you doing with the rocks with the two of you? Uh, I'm... Well, you heard Clark briefly talking upstairs and then turning around. I was thinking, like... Me and my perception hear what's going on. I'm just like, don't. If, if I get help it's, for like talking with the hag and Clark just goes up and rescues her, it's like. <laughs> well, he seems to be coming back down a little. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm like going and looking, finding rocks that look like they'll fit and putting those ones specifically aside. Okay. And then I'm going to um, find something that I can like use so I'm not touching the water. Like, try to hmm, shove what sort of thing are you looking for? There's not a lot around here. Lots Probably I, I'm looking mm -hmm. at Zacchaeus's staff. Lots of rocks. There are a lot of rocks. What, to like pack them in? To like push them in so I'm not touching the water. Or I can just like cast minor conjuration and pass you a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, that is an effective use of minor, minor conjuration. <laughs> I congratulate you on that. So I was more thinking of mallet. Okay. Like mallet or. Just something that I can like use to like jam them in there. Here's a mallet. <laughs> no, I can use it too because I have. I feel super strong right now. I think I'm st still stronger than. Is minor okay. conjuration once per short rest, or is uh, it? I think it's. You might be stuck with a shovel. I, I just looked at it and I forgot. <laughs> Glad you remembered it though. I like it. I'm learning eventually. All right. So you're sitting back down again to try yeah, to find. Yeah, he's gonna okay. try a different channel. And see make another wisdom saying. saving throw. Sure. No problem. Natural twenty. Natural twenty. Okay. Be a little more directed in what you're looking for. What's your what is your, your target? What are you looking uh, for? Uh initial aim was to to kill the, the thing. Okay. And, and not deal with the water specifically. Oh, okay. 
Mm -hmm. He figures the thing has to breathe. If the water's poisoned, it'll eventually kill. Okay. So that was the first guess. Right. But she confirmed they are not bothered by poison. They're dum-dums. Okay. It says I just have to use an action. Okay. No, that's great. Cool. Uh, so, Some um, of those abilities are usually like once or once short rest or something. So it that's fine. After an hour. Okay. Or if I use the feature again. Okay. Yeah. So you immediately use the other feature, and the hammer or mallet appears, so. and you start crudely trying to fix this. Yeah. Okay. So ba basically, cho choosing stone, dropping stone, and hitting it with the mallet. So are you going to be doing the mallet part, and, and she's doing the dropping of stone? Because you wanted to, you, you seem keen on using the mallet. Yeah, because like, it's not every day I feel super strong. Okay. <laughs> yes, but I'm immune to poison. Okay. Well, she does have a point. <laughs> Although I get to sit back poison. and supervise. Yep. Supervise yep. wind. Okay. So, I'm, I'm doing this as carefully as I can. Okay. Um, I mean, you're pounding rock into, into a, a crevice in the wall. It's not going to be quiet. Well, it's more carefully so that I'm not touching the water. Okay. So... It's, it's like dropping it from here so that like it doesn't splash and hitting with the mallet so I'm not putting my hand in the water. All right, now you're starting to make a little bit of progress. Is Kujima another another idea to do with something or? Hmm. I told the hammer to go help her. Okay. <laughs> As the little hammer walks over and uh, starts to kind of pound at the wall, not really knowing what you're doing until you kind of demonstrate yeah. a little bit. You try to explain, realize it doesn't understand what you're saying. Maybe the supervisor can explain yeah. to it. As, as the translator, actually, between the two. <laughs> Do what the wind is doing. Before you stands a... probably a half-elf. The ears are a little bit smaller than pronounced elves' ears, so probably a few generations back. Uh, a woman... Uh, standing proud, uh, dressed in a in, uh, uh, tunic and uh, clam digger level or length uh, pants, really nice boots, has a uh, tri cornered hat on and standing there. And weirdly enough, um, while there is no physical wind that you can feel in this area, um, the scarf that she has underneath her hat does seem, seem to move a little bit as though an invisible wind. Um, make an arcana check, actually. Uh, four. Four? Something's different about this one. Okay. And she stands there, uh, kind of with arms crossed, looking at you. So, you want to hunt a sea beast, eh? Yeah, sure. Hmm. You know, the things that live in water tend to stay in the water if they can. You've got a couple of different approaches. I take it it's too deep to dive down on your own. The knife I in hand. I assume so. Mm. Too bad. That's the most fun, I say. Well, you can make it come to you, or you can give it hell. If you want to make it come to you, you're going to have to find some reason for it to come up. Bait is usually one of the best, depending on what it's hungry for. You also try to force it out of its place. You have any explosives? A barrel of dynamite would go really well right now. Or a barrel of powder would go really well right now. No. Um, too bad. Any explosive magics? That'll do. Maybe. Hmm. Aside from that, are you worried about drowning? Is that the problem? Is that why you won't go down? Not currently. Hmm. It's a concern, but not currently. What kind of water is it? Hellish. Oh, that doesn't sound pleasant. Well, one of the things that my mates and I were trying to get down to some of the lower things, there was a delightful pearl we wanted to get. We had some magics that allowed us to breathe in the water. Those were good, but we needed more protection. The water itself was murky, and, uh, well, it got into all the places you didn't want it to kind of, we think there was a kelp or something that emitted this sort of uh, ooze on the bottom. Wrapped ourselves up in a proper suit, something that would actually keep that from us. Mm. And get a helmet of some kind. Has to be something closed with some vision. And then you go down, 
If you want to fight right there, you can, but it's tough. Fighting underwater, it's a lot more exhilarating, but a lot more dangerous than you might think. But if at that point you can build some sort of pressure, magic spell, whatever it happens to be, you can flush it out up to the top. Okay. Thank you. What sort of quarry are you fighting, fighting anyway? Some sort of squid-faced demon. Oh, those things. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Don't let it eat your head. <clears throat> I'll try not to. It's an unpleasant experience, I'm sure. Our goal is ever the connection. All right. And the captain goes away. You've been hammering away, and you kind of focus back in on the, the world around you, Clark, and you, ha- you can hear the, the sound of sort of crumble rock, Punk, punk, punk. Tick, tick, tick. As the larger and smaller hammers beat away at the, the wall. Um, the uh, little thing is having a harder time avoiding the water, so it's getting less work done. It doesn't avoid the water. Um, oh, okay. It just stands there. It's immune to poison. It's uh, immune to most things. It's, so. it's not poison. Mm-hmm. It's not poison. But Yeah, I'm saying it's, it's a hammer that's been magically animated. It's okay. probably not going to die. Um, if it does, it does. Well, it, it actually is engulfed by the water and does not seem to be affected by it. Um, it's almost as though this, whatever it is within the water, is not attracted to non-living things. Um, but it is a little awkward. But after about 30 minutes, you can see a visible reduction in the stream. You're making progress. It's going to take a little while to do that. There's been no return of Bazetsi. seems not to be bothered or seems to be away from the world. You do shrink down. I drop my rock. Because <laughs> I'm weak now. Um, and you're making some progress. It doesn't fall on my foot because I rolled a natural 20. Good, good. Um, another we 10 minutes like pass. That. Still working on it. Another 20 minutes pass. Half an hour. So an hour and a half total of working. And you have effectively sealed up this hole. There's a little bit of... of water that kind of gets through and it is a little disturbing because you can see that the rubble is being pushed on from time to time almost as though whatever is on the other side is actively trying to find a hole through water will do that this seems a little more aggressive than you're expecting yeah. but you've got a patch made at least for now how uh, quickly is the water and the stairs receding well the stream that was on the water all seems to flow very quickly into the, into the stairs that are there, faster than gravity would have it. Almost as though, having been severed from the original connection, it now wants to make uh, the the rest of the group its home. After that, no visible change in the water as of yet. How long are you going to wait before you do something else? I'll cast the unseen servant as unseen servant as a ritual. Okay. So I'll just sit there for 10 minutes and send it down into the water once it's done. Okay. In the meantime. Does the Unseen Servant have any special vision? I don't think so. I was looking at that and it's like, it says I can't... Oh wait, Unseen Servant or Arcane Eye? Unseen Servant. Oh, okay. Um. Okay. Yeah, it just simply goes down into the space. How far away do you want it to go? As far as it can. Okay. Uh, yeah, it only moves at 15 feet per round. So it's pretty slow. Yeah. And you're just commanding it to keep going down? Keep going down and just to see what's down there, basically. Uh, it only has a, you only have a range of mm-hmm. 60 feet on it, though. Yeah, but I mean, if it's directly below us with that. Um, yeah, you don't just mm-hmm. see it, so um, it starts descending down the stairs. Um, yeah, you don't have any connect- communication with it, so it just I'll disappears it, from sight. Okay. I'll ask it to pick up whatever it can find. Okay. Bring, and it can actually carry. Pick it up and bring it back? Yep. Okay. Um, it's gone for about 20 minutes before you start to see the disturbance in the water. You're watching the level of the water receding a couple of inches, not very far at this point. Um, what does it have? A strength of two? 
Yeah. So we can't pick up much, but like any little trinkets, um, tools. Huh. <laughs> uh, there's a there's a weird rippling in the water as something missed. Uh, as it comes back up, uh, and you see, the only thing you really see is what it's carrying, as it itself is invisible, uh, technically shapeless, so it doesn't really make any effect in the water. But coming out of the water, it pulls out a piece of uh, what looks like uh, black metal about that long. Okay. Uh, and it brings it back and sort of hovers it, handing it to you. You can put that on the floor. It puts it on the floor. Kind of makes a clink clink sound as it sets it down on the floor. It wasn't terribly graceful. Is it something I recognize? And is it the same black metal as uh, what was on the uh, egg? So you look a little closer, it does seem to have that same sort of, of minor pattern of, of sparkling of, that most of the star metal does. Again, it seems to be devoid of any power of its own. This one seems to is part of a large curve, and you can see that there are uh, uh, stamped into it uh, runes of some sort. So it's a part of a large curved surface of some kind. And judging from how far, how long it took to get down there, it's probably just down the next level, but the next level might be deeper than you thought it was. Do I recognize the runes? Uh, you can make an arcane check. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Seven plus. You do. They're part of a magical, a magical spell. Okay. Do I recognize the spell? Um, not from only the small segment. If you had another piece of the segment, you'd be able to actually tell you what the style spell is. Um, the kind of magic is probably... Hmm. Uh, conjuration. Cool. Because those are common rooms for, for that particular kind of magic. But otherwise, you're not sure what the exact spell is. Okay. So I'll relay that knowledge to my friends that it's a uh, part of something bigger and a spell, and it's also star metal and powerless. And I'll send the unseen servant back down there. Okay. Can you get any more? As far as you know, it turns and goes around. No one sees it, but you know that it's following your command. You go back down again. Um, then the spell's connection is severed as it goes away. Do I know why? Uh, well, it was probably attacked. There's something down there. Well, obviously. Mm -hmm. You said it's been an hour and a half or so that we've been sitting here? About that, yeah. So while okay. I was doing that with the Unseen Serpent, I'm assuming they were doing something else. Oh, well, yeah, that's I'm up taking to a short rest. Okay. You yeah. can take a breath, break. Um, I, once I'm done filling that in, uh, and I see that Kuzumaya is resting, I'm going to drop my form and take a short rest as well. Okay. Um, because... Full health without using spell slots is nice. Mm. Right, a short rest would be nice. But what is Clark up to in the meantime? Um, I imagine he's been pacing this whole time. All right. It's a small room, but yeah. doesn't take long to pace from one side to the other. You might be tempted to kick the small part of the uh, egg, but then realizing that it's probably pretty heavy and strong and painful. Mm. Um, you might look at it. Okay. That's about it. Again, it was basically broken right where the seam was between the two pieces. Right. Um, uh, internally, there's a little bit of sort of gooey substance. The thing may have been exuding it itself. It might be a part of the egg itself. Right. Um, Zacchus had mentioned that this would, had been used before and wasn't being used properly. You're not really sure what such a thing would be used for properly. But... Um, I poke it with my staff. <laughs> kind of like remembering the feeling of being in one of these and just kind of go, yeah, it's gross. Yeah, it's definitely different in style because those are purely organic. Yeah. But uh, this one is, is a combination. Maybe even attempting to rebuild something like that? Merging some known magics with some lesser known magics? Yeah, that's fucked up. Are you taking a short rest along with the rest? I don't think he's actually going to be resting. Okay. I think I'll just pace and think. Over the time when you're taking the, the rest, the water has stopped flowing down. Just like I said, time for a short rest. Yeah, because you weren't very active okay. while the Unseen Servant was going and doing its thing. Um, you do notice the water has dropped a couple more inches. 
but at this rate, if the floor is the same height as this one is, that's going to take a long time to just drain out on its own. After a long rest, how many hit dice wave back? All of them? This is just a short rest. No, no, but like when I took a long one. Half. Half. Okay. All right. Um. Are you beating the drum while they're doing the rest? No, sure. Oh, I don't have a drum, but yeah. Oh, no, sorry, I do have a drum. Never mind. I thought it was a drum. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is the effect of that? Extra D6. Okay. After about you know, three quarters, the rest is over. Some of you hear the faint sound of lullaby singing from far up above. I whisper fuck off. <laughs> um, it turns into a body tavern song. It's almost enough to make uh, Zacchaeus blush. What song? It's a body tavern song. Um, a very explicit sexual oh, okay. song of, of, uh, of a very limerick nature. like very limerick like B A W D Y. Oh, okay. yeah, sorry. <laughs> I get words totally. Cargo head back upstairs. Um, I am going to, um, having seen Zacchus fire like shooting fire at this and killing some of the water. Mm -hmm. I do have wall of fire. Hmm. I could make a wall of fire that just goes down the stairs, but I don't know how effective that would be of getting rid of the body of water. If anything, it might purify it of whatever. Or make a bunch of tainted steam that we breathe in. Hmm. Well, no, until you try. You head back up the stairs. Yeah. She sit. doesn't seem to be too surprised this time. He's going to sit in front of the cage. She's sitting on the inside, kind of rocking, humming to herself a little bit. Care for a drink? Clark will put a few coins on the ground. Mm. Pull out his dice. Offer up game. What are the stakes? No stakes. What's the fun of having a game with no stakes? Do you have any money? I have a lot of wisdom. I don't want your wisdom. Do you have any money? Sadly, it's all somewhere else. Tied up in investments. <laughs> Her world went boom. <laughs> Clark will put 30 gold on the floor in front of her. Okay. Say, if you want some of this, we can play. Are you willing to vouch for me until I've won my fair share to pay you back? Sure. Then I'm in. All right. Now, Clark has a set of dice, so okay. engage in some gambling. All right. Um, roll a d20 with advantage. Sure. I'm trained. Are you trained? Yeah. Uh, okay, then you add your skill in. Uh, natural 20, plus mm. proficiency is 4. 24. Okay. Um, she's lost about half of that already. Okay. You're very skilled at this game of chance, but I should expect no nothing more or nothing less from someone like you. I've seen your weapon. Yeah? I know who sponsors you. Who's that? One of the twins. The bolder and the bigger of them. But no less dangerous for being a little less subtle sometimes. Yep. Roll Are you again. in front of the roll? Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> that, was a, that was a one, a one at rolling. So I don't know if I want to impose disadvantage now. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> See if I need to spend that point of luck. Uh, yeah, I will. <laughs> doesn't he have advantage? You do have advantage still. Oh. So you don't need to use your luck. We'll see here in a sec. 
Well, um, do you want to call that a 20? That is a 20. <laughs> another, another 20? All right. So 24. That, that, that golden die. <laughs> that's, what, that's what works. Um, you've won back the money you staked to her. Okay. I guess it just isn't my day to beat the odds. You don't play by them. No. But in here I have limited effect. Me too. Oh no, dearie. Your effect is far more powerful than you might be granting it. Just like that of your friend. Big things are in store for both of you. If you survive that long. Okay. Connor will get up and meander back. Is that it? Yeah. Nothing more. No. I'm a simple man. (laughs) You'll head back downstairs. All right. (laughs) She begins singing a song as you start walking down again. Her voice changes to that of a much younger woman as she sings. Um, And the song is uh, strangely familiar. Glargol, speak up the stairwell. You owe me 30 gold worth of silence. Then I'll continue tromping downstairs. (laughs) The song stops. Now I'll come back down and see what the people are up to. Well, having taken a uh, rest, a short rest, what are the people up to? Um, it's about six inches now that it's dropped. I'll firebolt the watery entrance just to see what happens. Okay. Um, you don't need to roll because you're not aiming at a particular small part. Um, it hisses, there's a bit of a splash and a sizzle. and It's hard to tell if there's anything different in this large body of water from such a minor spell. I don't have any small fire spells. It's uh, level four or go home. <laughs> so. Any more ideas? That would be. Yeah, the best. So, what are you going to do? This might be convoluted. Excellent. (laughs) The best plans are convoluted. I have this little spell called Absorb Elements. Okay. What is it? What if Zacchaeus hits me with the firebolt, and then I make an attack, use Absorb Elements, and make an attack with the added fire damage from Absorb Elements? Okay. Keeping in mind that Absorb Elements doesn't take away any of the damage. It only gives you a best bit of a boost. Uh, no, it makes me resistant to that damage. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, at the start of your neck, or after that. Yeah. Um, you have resistance to uh, to the triggered damage until the start of your next turn. Oh, yeah, okay. It, it weirdly doesn't actually remove, ruin it, or remove any of the damage. It makes you resistant, so technically it just makes you half of the, half the damage. Yeah. Um... And adds a d6 of the damage type. So if you were to attack me with fire damage, I can attack the water with fire damage. Okay. But at a higher... Um... Uh, okay, yep. Yeah, yeah, it's a melee attack, but yeah. Yeah. I have melee weapons. I was... Got that backwards of thinking, why does it say when you're hit with a melee attack? Oh, no, when you're hit... Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you could channel the energy that way. Um... Right. Let's try this. So I will, like... <laughs> so it's a reaction. Yeah. So what spell are you using? Just firebolt. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I use my reaction to cast... I will cast it at level 2. Okay. So it's 2d6. All right. So uh, first of all, roll your damage. Okay, so you take uh, eight points of damage. Now you're kind of charged up. You can see a little bit of, of, of flame around her outline. Cool. And the spell, as a while it hits, kind of also um, spreads around her. I'm just trying to remember what melee weapons this character has on her. Because <laughs> uh, I do melee so often. Um, yeah, you really don't. Um, <laughs> don't yeah. set it on fire. 
Uh, I have... Actually, I'll use my quarterstaff. Uh, and just, like, try to, like, curb stomp it. Okay. Uh, again, there's not really roll to hit. It's it's not moving that side. It's not dodging in the way. It's not a small patch of it. Yeah. So just roll your damage. So uh, you can roll actually to see if you crit. I guess. I don't know how you crit on water, but we'll we'll go with that. I rolled an eighteen okay. on the die. Um, so you do not hit the water in a crucial spot. <laughs> uh, just give me a second here. So. Uh, the wormwood one is the regular damage. Okay. But uh, it is 10 fire damage. Okay. And then I'm guessing the scimitar damage does not. Uh, I, well. It was uh, two. It's really uh, extra damage that's the fire so damage. It was, it was full. <laughs> um, so yeah, so. you slash away at it and kind of extend this fiery nimbus that's around you through the through the scimitar into the water and it makes a, a, a slash where it hits. The slashing damage does actually count. Okay, so that's four. Um, and and kind of cuts this this wedge through the water. Now the wedge seals up again because it still flows like water, but it does seem to have visibly moved another three or four inches just from that hit. As though it is as though it is uh, uh, okay. so somewhat that... vulnerable to fire. Cool. So my idea might work. For how, how for how long can you hit? Oh, this this was a test to see if I can cast my higher level spell and it actually be worth the gotcha. level four yeah. spell <laughs> versus level two spell. And I can't <laughs> Um So Um I'm gonna tell everybody to back up. I'm gonna go back in the room. What are you doing? Radix is concerned. Something that involves fire. I'm a light the shit on fire. <laughs> Wait, you can actually light water on fire? Apparently. Some parts of this water, apparently. I'm going to go one floor up. <laughs> <laughs> everything about this is telling me she's just going to create a lot of steam. It's it fair. Uh, and that's also why I'm telling people to back up. <laughs> um, I am going to... Because I saw that, that all of the damage was taken, I am going to do it at level 5. Okay. I'm going to upcast it. Um, actually, no, I'll, I'll just do level 4 and then level 5 if needed. Seems like a better plan. Um, so... Casting time one action. Mm-hmm. Mm, concentration up to one minute. Mm-hmm. And now it's on a solid surface, so I presume you're doing it on the stairs. On the stairs, yeah. Okay. So basically I also presume you're 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 making the heat in the other direction. Because you choose which side of the wall the heat is on. Yeah. And presumably you don't want to just roast yourself. You no. want to actually roast the water. Yeah. Okay. So basically what I'm gonna do, I get to use my walls. <laughs> uh, I'm going to move him. I'm going to light basically the wall mm -hmm. like that. So it goes around. And because this is, I believe, two, four, six. Actually, I'll go a floor up too. Because <laughs> it's. <laughs> yeah? Uh, so, 60 feet long. So, yeah. Okay. Are you coming up one floor with us? So no. Uh, Great X come with us. I'ma shoot that down so that it curves and follows the wall. Okay. Um. Um. All right. And yeah. It is only uh, one foot thick. As yep. You're going down. Uh, yep. But it does. Uh. Ba basically, I'm going to. Um. Do it so that. It's burning the water. Okay. Is the goal. All right. I'm also going to pick up that piece of star metal that the unseen serpent brought me. All right. Put um, it in my pocket. Say so one foot thick, 20 feet high. Um, and yeah, I'm going to right. make it. Uh, deck save or take 5d8 fire damage or half. Well, I'll tell you, it's not really good at deck saves. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead and roll your damage, 6d8. Oh, no, you didn't upcast it. Uh, 5d8, so yeah. One, two, three, four, five. 
So six, eight, twelve, twenty-one. Okay. So as you cast forth, and this weird sort of flame starts to flicker, flicker just under the water, and then expand up along the wall, the one thing you instantly realize is, huh, there's not twenty feet of ceiling here. So it goes up, runs up the side of the wall, curves over the top of the wall, and actually kind of curves and forms a, a uh, an arch. An arch. Uh, and then you start to hear the sizzling, and the sizzling and popping of the tiny little creatures that live within this viscous surface that is almost like water, but not quite. Um, and the, the, it, the fire extends downward and downward and downward into the spiral. I want to take a picture of this, because uh, it's the first you, time I've gotten to use <laughs> <laughs> You hear the, uh, the hissing of the water steam is starting to roil up out of this, and one of the things you realize is because this is essentially a corkscrew, while the water that's immediately hit hit by it starts to uh, starts to boil and bubble and, and vanish away, the water on the other side is inevitably pressed into it. And you actually watch as the water tries to crawl uphill but fails and is impaled essentially against the burning burning fire all the way down until you can no longer see as the water evaporates down the the uh, the stairwell, you can no longer see the water because it's around the corner from you. Now the steam, however, is thick and acrid. Um, uh, I expected this. Each of you make a constitution saving throw to avoid breathing in. Oh, yeah, it's flowing upward. Oh, shit. Um, in fact, the higher up you get, the thicker it gets because it actually concentrates on the stairwell and starts going upward. I only have one floor. Can you con save? Seven. Con save. Eight. Um, it would be considered poison for resistance purposes. Thank you. You're, you're already... 23. 20, 23. Eight. Eight. 17. 17. So, uh, Zacchaeus, um, you're standing there and then kind of realizing, huh, that's a little bit of steam. That's a lot of steam. I should... <gasps> and you take five points of poison damage, effectively, as this acrid, uh, non... It, it's like, like a viscous steam, kind of like um, uh, walking through... Uh, a Floridian jungle on a uh, bad pollen day combined with sort of floating bird shit. It's just horrible, yeah. burning your lungs. You double over, which thankfully pulls you out of the steam for the moment. Uh, and then you see at least the immediate uh, stairs do seem to be swept free. In fact, they're they're uh, almost swept free and uh, cleaned from any, any small amount of debris was there. <laughs> was, is basically uh, atomized and carried upward. Um, um, yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cast protection of, 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 from poison on myself. Okay. Having realized the coughing and ha the steam was a lot worse than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to stay close to the floor. That is a uh, constant. Uh, nope, no, protection poison, not, not a constant. Wow, it's one of the ones that's not. Hour. Weird. All the other protections are concentration. Yep. Okay. Um, are you going to maintain the wall of fire as it is, or are you going to... I am... It's for one minute, so I'm going to spend, leave it there for the minute, because I don't think I can move it. No, I was looking at that. There's no, yeah. there's no movement, unfortunately. Um. Unless so. I missed there. Yeah, that worked. Okay. Um, the steam passes very, very quickly because the heat, heat of this is very high, and it did seem to be somewhat vulnerable to being burned. Yeah. Um. Uh, I. I'm going to look at everybody else. I'm like... There's also a bright glow from down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can do this a couple more times. It's expensive. It's very exhausting. Um, <coughs> can we see how far the water dropped? Yeah. If you want to go down, and presumably waiting until the fire itself yeah. has actually gone out. Uh, I, I made it so that it's... There's... Like, it's only hot on one side, right? But presumably you have the cold side up against the wall, so the heat oh, yeah. stores the water, right? Yeah. To be the entire yeah. rest of it. Till the, so. till it's done. Then. Okay. And then. With a concentration spell, you can break concentration early. Oh no, I, I I want to leave it up. Okay. Just in case something tries to start going okay. up. Also, you might roil the uh, guy down below. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Boil the water. <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, well, the minute passes. And the wall fades. Do all of you come down at this point? After the steam, Cl like Clark would like, like to stand at the top of the stairs. Okay. And 
as soon as there's the moment's notice of clarity, he will attempt to run down the stairs, blade okay. in hand. The steam passes very quickly. We just flash boil, essentially, for that okay. first few seconds. Okay. Um, behind you, as you go down the stairs, you hear a... Clever, clever. Um, and I you, whisper, clever enough to beat you once. <laughs> um, as you come down the stairs and, and the fire dissipates, you can see that... Um, I, I see Clark staring to run, like, careful, there's more water at the bottom. I can move 60 a turn. Yeah, this okay. wall is 60 feet. So you do run down the stairs, yep. Yeah. Uh, and very quickly, you just see right at the edge of where the fire was, the water is still there. Okay. Um, thin on the floor, so kind of like this floor was only partially covered. There are spots, kind of uh, difficult terrain with the water being in there. Uh, but it does look like it's drained significantly. Um, you also notice there is a door on this floor. The central room is not open. And the door seems to have held, even despite the water. Okay. Uh, it's a... Looks like a stone door. Is there anybody down here? I'm you don't following. see anybody. Yeah. I'll gradually make my way down, but slower. Okay. Again, the stairs are now very smooth. It's very kind of warm on the feet still uh, as you make your way down. Um, the wall is this. This wall is weirdly cold. The, the interior wall is weirdly steaming a little bit still on its own. Um. And then you, uh, yeah, you see again that same sort of door. Uh, it looks like it's magically sealed because there's no visible thing there, but it's also held up against the pressure of the water. There's no window in the door either. Okay. And it just need to be a, a simple um, um, depression handle, essentially. So it's basically just a, a flat paddle that you press, but it doesn't seem to move. So it doesn't need to be bound. Uh, can we look around for a mechanism? Aside from that, um, you look around for five minutes and don't see any other things okay. on it. What shape of what species hand is it? It's just a flat a bar. bar, a flat block of stallion. It's just meant to tilt a little bit, and on the other side, presumably, is the release mechanism, okay. but it's not moving. Hinges seem to be on the inside, but it's recognizably a door. Okay. Not adorned, very, very simple door, but thick, probably. Kind of tap on it, and you realize this is probably stone that's at least six inches to eight inches thick. Sit down. Okay. The water's not very far away. Um, seems to have still receded. It's now kind of the top of the next stairs down. You all come down? Mm hmm. Radix kind of sneaks down behind you. What no. is it? A door? Yep. Is it similar to the one that was on one of the upper floors? This one looks thicker and more reinforced. Okay. Or rather, it's thicker stone, which itself is reinforcement. There's no other banding or anything on it. I'll virtually cast Detect Magic to see if there's any magic on it. Okay. The door is indeed magic. It has... Uh, that would be... Uh, abjuration Magic. <laughs> it does appear to be magically sealed. There's Protection Magic on it. I'll look around for any extra pieces of the uh, star metal, because, I mean, if something is dumb as the Unseen Servant was able to pick up a piece, like, surely there might be others. Is my ring reacting to the piece uh, that he's carrying mm, right now? Mm, faintly. Okay. There, there's not, there's no power of this metal at all. It has been drained of whatever energy it has. Mm -hmm. So it's more of sort of a faint, one of those almost a faint magnetic reaction, mm -hmm. but there's nothing really drawing you to it. It's okay. more of an aversion. It's still thing. telling me to keep going down? Yes. Okay. Sounds like a good time for a break. So mm -hmm. we can we can take a break. You guys can think about it. How's that? Think about the door. Think about the door. Doors are dangerous. I realize. But is there any more star metal? Uh, not immediately. No. Okay. okay. So uh, make it make an intelligence check. Twelve plus. Intelligent me forgot my intelligence score. So eighteen total. So if it got this from this floor, it must have gotten through the door, which means it might it must have been unlocked when it was here before. We are going to take a brief break, 15 minutes or so. We'll see how long that goes. Cool. And we'll see if we can uh, return with them facing off against their greatest foe, a door. A female door. <laughs> A 
drop of golden sun. <laughs> right? Oh, no, sorry. Um, so I wanted to bring us back. Uh, welcome back if you're watching. I did check in. There were a couple of people in the chat room. There wasn't any chat going on, so you might be just robots or not saying much. I don't have the chat open at the moment anyway, so you could have just said something and I wouldn't see it. Oh, I do have the chat open. Well, there you go. Uh, Hello, I want to bring Jay. us back to the map screen because I don't think I had the map screen on when uh, Marie was uh, having Elzera lay out her very careful plan of burning the water, uh, which we're going to Burn it, well. make it burn. Burn all the water. So I wanted to show that she has these wonderful bricks. If you do and, follow uh, me on Instagram, you'll see them. You'll yeah? see it. it. There was a picture posted there and I'm on my page. Uh, awesome. Didn't think to share it to the group page. But. So we're in a less of a tactical mode right now, so we'll switch us back to our uh, yeah. our typical screen here. And now that there's no more fire, I will take my fire back. Sure, <laughs> sure. For now. For now. I mean, there could be more fire soon. Okay. Uh, but for now, you're faced with a lo magically locked door into an inner chamber. It is made of stone, as are most of the walls and most everything around here. Same sort of stone. It's a simple mechanism which does not seem to move. What would you like to do? Can I inspect the mechanism? You can take a closer look, yeah. Yep, I'll do that. Yeah. Uh, make a um, masonry roll. Is that intelligence based? Uh, let's call this a. Uh, if I write a book about masonry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can't pull that trick every time. Um, let's make it a straight, uh, make a straight history check. Seventeen plus. Mm -hmm. 27. Okay. Um, this is a very, very old style mechanism. I mean, this would have been in use a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago. Um, one of the nice things about it, it being made of stone, and it's nothing more than really a balanced stone meant to, meant to usually just keep a door closed. Mm -hmm. uh, the doors came up with this mechanism because most of what they deal with is stone, and why use extra metal when you don't have to. Um, the way the doors are normally built are uh, built so they very easily pivot on the side that they have the hinges on. The hinges normally are on the inside of the door. Um, so there's nothing very complicated about the handle of, of the door itself. Uh, but you've already previously shown that it is magically infused with uh, some sort of abjuration magic, probably a magic uh, lock or maybe a ward. It's hard to tell. But the mechanism right now isn't moving. Is it moving or it's like if I press it? It's not hands. moving at all. Okay. Like it's fixed in position. Okay. So, what would you like to do? The water still is on the set of stairs going downward. We've cleared off this particular level, it seems. What would you like to do? I'll go have a peek down the stairs. Okay. Like before, you note that the water is just below the top couple of stairs in this case, so it receded a little bit further down. Uh, but hasn't receded that far. Um, and still seems to be just as murky as ever. No light from below. Mm. You said you were, you were ritually, ritually casting uh, Detect Magic? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has Protection Magic on it. Okay. Yep, Abjuration Magic. How strong does it look? Uh, magic. It, magic doesn't really have strength that it gives off most of the time. Most of the time, more complicated and strength magic is just simply it has multiple kinds of magic. Okay. This one seems to be very straightforward. Spell. Yeah. Well, uh, how about we dispel that? Okay. Or you could knock. That's Pat, not Kuzima. <laughs> oh. But yes, knocking would be the simple approach, wouldn't it be? Well, do Pat I made the knock spell, but... I don't have it. Guess, guess. Well, I, I don't have it equipped. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Is it so, okay if I just knock on the door instead, or is that like outside information? <laughs> I mean, you can certainly knock on the door if you want to. Yeah. I'll try that first, see okay. what happens. It's a very, very door, dull door. thud, meaning the door is probably really, really thick. Three and I probably didn't hear you. Hmm? I'll back away a little bit. Yeah, or as, was, as much whatever, as I can. Whatever's in the other side of the door. Oh. It's true. It would be quite quiet inside. Yeah. Sorry, you were doing, uh, what's her? Dispel magic? Yeah, dispel. Level three. Okay. Uh, you cast the Dispel, and satisfyingly, the the spell launches out towards the door, kind of hits like a uh, a uh, splash of water flowing over the door, and the little mechanism seems to loosen. Clary? Yeah? The magic's gone. I, Excellent. You seem to be better with a 
traps that are non-magical in nature. Do you care to inspect this? Sure. I will look around. Okay. Make a uh, make a perception check. Five, twenty-six. Twenty-six. Um, the mechanism itself is extraordinarily simple. It doesn't seem to be anything above or below the little little uh, platform that's there. Okay. Um, do you try the door yeah. just a little bit? Yeah, I try just a little bit. And one of the first things you notice is that it moves very smoothly now. The door has more pressure to it than you might expect. And a little bit of dribble of water flows underneath the edge of the door. This thing's holding back a wall of water. Who is? So what you realize from there is the door was probably closed before the water was cleared out and the water was stuck in there behind this door and locked behind them. Well. Mm. I'll open it. Wait, wait, wait. Um, okay. Are there any I'm going like, up the stairs a bit. blocks <laughs> or boulders in this room or anything we can stand on so the water won't like... You can't get into the room until you open the door, okay. and the rest is just the stone stairs, which have been very well swept away by fire and by water. You open up the door, the water uh, starts to flow outward. I, I am going to position myself a bit back from the door, okay. so that I'll be able to see into the room when it's open. Okay. The door swings inward, yeah. as the hinges are on the inside. Okay. Right. On um, left or right? Like going uh, up the it stairs? It opens to the right. Okay. I'm going to go up the stairs with Kazima because I don't want water. I don't want any more of these shitty parasites. Okay. <laughs> so like we're coming down this way. Door opens this way. Um, yes. Okay. okay yeah. Cool. So I'm going to position myself like here, okay. so I can see this point here. Okay. And as I said, there's no water all the way down to the first couple of stairs around the bend. Yeah. So as you as you open up the door, the water starts to flow up pretty quickly. And I'm going to cast another wall of fire. Only this time, I'm casting it fire inside the room. Okay. Around in the circle, uh, so it makes a okay. circle in in the room. I hope it's an alchemy lab. Clark, no. Ah! <laughs> so you kind of dodge around Clark's uh, as he's as he's slowly yeah. pushing this door open, which is hard to push open because it's got that force. Do I see Alzheimer doing this as I walk away? Uh, you see her down there, ready so, to cast something. I'm gonna hold my breath and hit the floor on the next room up, okay. so I, I'm at, so I don't inhale like any of like whatever what, what, yeah. whatever okay. whatever. Uh, was last time. So I, I'm positioning myself basically so anything inside the room cannot see me. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, to counterspell me. Oh no! Okay. <laughs> uh, as the foosh of fire uh, steams out everything in the room, uh, and the steam flows up above, the door suddenly lurches because there's nothing behind it, and you kind of push it open all the way. Um, you do see little bits and pieces, small pieces of paper and other things that lit up inside the room. That just does not see um, But the room is clear of, of the water with that foosh. Uh, okay. Because all of you were ready for it and hunkering down towards the floor, I'm not going to make you roll once again uh, for the uh, Constitution save for the for the uh, poisonous effect of that. Um, I would leave it up <clears throat> until it dispels. Uh, so for a full minute. Yeah. Okay. Um, because as far as she's aware, there's something in there because okay. it wasn't. Okay. Yeah. Um, after the minute is over and presumably Clark is pulled back a bit from the burning door on the inside. Um, you see that the room is devoid of any creatures. But in the center of the room is a very large circular, um, I'll call it an engraving, but I'll describe why it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, there is the remnant small ashes of um, paper. Actually, you would have seen a little piece of paper fly by you in the, in the uh, ashes as well. No. But in the center of the room, where's my little pre-made description here? That are we all seeing this? Like, do we assume we've moved? I, I presume that all of you are moving okay. inward. The, the first impression will be from Clark and from Elzera, but the rest of you will see the same. Um, Basically, the decision was a mix of, I don't want this water to go back up, yeah. what I just cleared, plus, as far as she's aware, the thing is in there, because you said that that came from yeah. the floor below. So, and the door was now locked. And so. Well, if we get back, I can always ask Emerald what the hell he was doing. So, one thing that, what the way you'll notice is this, this engraving essentially in the middle of the room. 
As soon as Zaka sees it, you'll recognize it immediately. Oh yeah, teleportation uh, as the teleportation circle that has been destroyed. The teleportation oh. circle is tied to the same symbols that were in the library. At least from what you can see, there remains much of it is charred. Some of it has been been uh, uh, destroyed, and its construction is strange because it's not made just like the one in the library. It's made it's very made from very elaborate materials, but they don't have the same materials here. Instead, what you see are there are the well now charred remains of a uh, a gleaming white bones, large bones that have been carved down. So probably similar bones to what you found before. Bits and pieces of that metal. Um, of the star metal once again that have been placed in this complicated pattern around but it looks as though um, in the center whatever had powered this uh, is now kind of a weird combination of it's like a black coal that has been wetted by water and then dried by fire and some small ashes remain smeared along the bottom um, so clearly this was the, the gate that Emerald had constructed and the way that he had made it back. One form of the gate. You still don't know how uh, uh, Vrinwick made it back. Um, you do see the spine of a, uh, a book. The spine title, it's a little hard to make out, but after kind of cleaning it up a little bit, uh, you find a book called Elements of Shadow. A theoretical delving into the afterlife, written by Tarsal Praxis. But there's nothing left of the book except the spine. No. <laughs> um, another spine is there uh, with the back cover. On the side of the spine are simply the initials I A. You take a closer look. The back cover. Uh, no. No. In fact, the back cover has a large gouge and it was probably used to defend somebody at one point. Uh, it is about the right size of a typical spell book, however. Yeah, that's it rules. I'm going to like take the spine and take the back cover. Like Anything I can, I can salvage. Okay. It's probably useless, but... Okay. <laughs> so are you going to look around at the, the thing itself? Yeah. Okay. The circle? Yeah. Oh, definitely. So I will make you roll because... Presumably, you're going to take a bit of time to do this anyway, and this is something you know very well. Um, I spent a lot of time doing this. <laughs> the, it is the three three additional elements are there as a, a, in addition to the carving that was on the floor itself. So the floor itself formed the basis of this gate. Uh, into it were fused the the white stone carved, which you come to realize there's only one thing that looks like that here. It is part of a bone of Biloxia that was used in this ritual. Um, there are the star metal, devoid now of any energy whatsoever, but still have that strange shimmering effect, a piece of which you you sent your servant down and picked it up mm -hmm. before, just literally just picked up a random piece, yeah. and you see where it goes. The third part, the greasy part, part on, the, on the middle, it takes you a few moments to figure out what that is, um, but then you also remember how you got into the tower. This is very likely the remains of uh, of uh, soul shards or the uh, coins. Where do I get them here? Uh, shadow coins that were consumed in the process of this spell. It's hard to know exactly how much was used, but given that there's still greasy residue there after all of the things this room has gone through. You would imagine it was kind of like a barbecue. Chol briquettes of these soul stones were, were used in the middle, consumed in the process of exiting. Okay, so that's what powered the exit, basically. Essentially, all three of those things combined together. Okay. And all three of them were expelled or expunged, used up okay. in the process. And we here we are. We we left the pillar and the temple of Nuwasani. That's unfortunate. <laughs> but yeah, as I would. I'm assuming I'll be like relaying this to my the rest of the people. That's up to you. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. He gets a little bit esoteric in his magical explanation. It's a lot of theoretical stuff about the teleportation circles and the interrelation of multiple levels of. of I zone out. But the essence mm -hmm. is still understood, mm -hmm. as this was how Emerald escaped. Yeah. So now that these things. I'm are probably powerless. still nodding once he stops and. <laughs> 
<laughs> Are you okay? Bye. The other thing that strikes you is mm. you've seen two of those three things. You know what that circle looks like. You help rebuild it yeah. with, along with uh, 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 Nala. Nala, yeah, you know, along with Nala's help. You could rebuild this. Would it take a hundred days, though? You're not inventing it. Yeah. Um, so it would take a lot less time than it did the first time to make it. The soul stones would be one of the things you'd have to find. The soul coins. Don't we have a shit ton of them? Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have any star stone at, mo at the moment yeah. that's active. But on this level, as you kind of take a moment after all the excitement has gone off and all this looking has gone off, you kind of feel an elevated level of the hum, which means there probably is one very close, probably below you. So with effort, you might be able to get a way out, provided the gate on the other side hasn't been destroyed, obscured, or has any other restrictions. Well, as far as I knew, only Emerald and... Only Emerald and Nala and a select few people knew about this. What's my ring? My ring wants to keep going down. Your ring again. wants to keep going, yeah. It's getting no particular resonance from here, just like the piece of metal he brought up before. There's sort of a familiarity, but no real pull. But definitely a pull from... It's the like... <laughs> it's not as strong as that. And it's still divided. Yeah. Weirdly, at this point, the other one is up from you. Yeah. Up on the surface, but this one's definitely closer. This so. could be rebuilt. It would take effort. The gate of the library should be active. What if Emerald wanted us to be stuck down here? That's what I was thinking. What if the gate is not active? I, I don't think he would, but at this point I'm not sure if he wouldn't either. The ring wants you to keep going. Oh, I, I'm not make. I've not been saying oh, anything. Oh, no, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> This is player wanting to yeah. know. Clark says, "I don't think this is our path." But the gate? No, possibly not. And even if it were, we have to go below because. Do you feel the hum? Surely you feel the hum. I feel something. Yeah, so you, have, you feel it most keenly. I don't like it. Like, it bring back. It, it brings back a. Uh, not quite good memories, but... There's a little bit of seductiveness to it. Yeah. <laughs> I hate not having control of my own mind, but, uh... There is a lot of power in the star pieces. It could be used to power this gate. In any case, to escape, we have to go a floor below. Two floors below, three floors below, who knows? At this point, you're not even sure how many floors you've gone down. Player also forgot. <laughs> Clark looks at the pool of water. It's probably draining down where the stairs are. He says, "Well, let's figure a way through that, I guess." Yes. Uh, if, if we could try to preserve any uh, parchments or spell books in future rooms, that would be much appreciated. <laughs> Feel free to lead. A, a tear from Zagus's eye like flows down. <laughs> I kind of want to check the ones I just threw out. Well, so do I. I'll find them later. Player wants to go. <laughs> Feel free to walk through the water if you have any better mm -hmm. suggestions. This is the only way we have to clear the water, so... Stupid unseen servant. I, I should have told, the, told it to pick up books. That's okay. not stupid unseen servant. Shh! <laughs> um, I'll cast another one. <laughs> it's okay. a, originally un unseen servant. Okay, so he's busy casting that. Is it obvious that the door is permeable? Mm -hmm. The door itself? Yeah. Um, given how solidly it was on there, it's probably not. Okay. I made the assumption, Clark says, mm -hmm. that the store was sealed before the water came. But it must not have been. The water doesn't pass through the door. Sorry, the connecting oh. the dots. Player. It means the door has been opened yeah. while the egg guy was sleeping. While the hag upstairs right. Good. Well, the un was imprisoned. Yes. The unseen servant did manage to get a piece of star metal, so the door must have been closed recently. Unless the star metal was in the hallway. Hmm, I suppose I can't just ask the servant, but... That's why I burned it. 
The servant or the door? The yeah, room. Yeah, the, the everything room. The room, yeah. No, it was a logical thing to do. Like, I would have probably done the same thing and then kicked myself for it. Yeah. yeah. So shut. What? <laughs> I wasn't blaming you. I was just... <sighs> this was Emerald's spellbook. Well, he did say that he would have kicked himself for it, so it's only fair that he kicks you for it now. <laughs> Stay out of this. <clears throat> do I have to restart my ritual casting of uh, Unseen Servant because of the, <laughs> the bickering? <laughs> uh, I'll, 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 I'll allow that you kind of were able to bicker and cast at the same time, at least in this instance. <laughs> okay. Where it's like, I knew what I do. Shut up. Continue the, the hand ritual while you, you speak a moment. Then you summon your unseen servant. At least you think you do. You can't really see it. In fact, there's kind of a weird conundrum there. It can't be seen, can't be felt. It kind of has no presence or shape. I'll order it to go on floor below and pick up anything they can find, but pr- to prioritize books or paper. And Star Metal Third. Okay. You're pretty sure it has some idea what you just said. Yeah. It's not very smart. And once again, it goes into the water. It displaces water slightly, technically shapeless. I don't know. I don't know what shape it would form with the water. It's kind of a weird conundrum. These are the things GMs are called upon to do. Uh, as it disappears into the water. And the spell ends. I whisper that like character that was character whispering it's like ah, fucking glumpkins probably the undead guy it could be either one either way it's not safe and now we have to go through all this water uh Ironbound mm-hmm. have I ever shown you how to do an Aquanian handshake I do not believe you've shown me any handshakes well it seems like we've got some time to kill well, he's virtual casting. Sure. Let me learn you. I got nothing to do. So, Clark is going to teach uh, Kuzumaya how to... Uh, I'm not the only one. In 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 the midst of a handshake, change uh, weapons from right to left. Okay. Grab, do a, a nice pull so that you're in position to do a backstab facing forward. Okay. With a bit of a flourish, so you don't see it happening until it's kind of done. Okay. So that sounds like a sleight of hand type yeah, type sure. of t- type uh, distraction. Yeah. Uh, with a two. But it's yeah. just practice. So. You're doing it slow enough that it's not yeah. really slight. Yeah. The idea is there, but you're uh, maybe because Kuzima Kuzai- is that much smaller, uh, it's hard to kind of trick him into doing it. Well, hopefully the lesson's being learned. Uh, mm-hmm. Clark will ask if the tail is prehensile. Like, can you move things with that? Um, I can't remember if I picture or how long that is. Long edge. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not prehensile either okay. way, but I mean, he could shove stuff with it, but that's about it. Uh, Clark will suggest uh, use of the tail in in the dis- in the distraction. Hmm. Okay. Can you wag it? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Kuzima waggles his tail and then gets a 25 on a sleight of hand roll. <laughs> He's really picking this up quickly. Good. So if you find yourself with nothing but a dagger, and you're dealing with a foe who likes to talk a lot... Mm, hopefully one who gets hurt by the dagger. That's all I can hope for. Mm, thanks. No so problem. mechanically, I like this. Um, we're going to say it's a sleight of hand versus perception. On success, you'll get advantage on the next attack. It has to be done immediately. Mm. Cool. The what did you call it? The it's the Aquinian handshake. The Aquinian handshake. People in Aquin don't like to shake hands. Well, certain individuals you don't uh, trust it. May need to get out of a handshake really quickly. And thus, the the tradition of bowing became popular in Aquin, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which was shortly followed by spiked knee pads. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, Picklehauser on the top. He's got the spike to do it. Um, so time passes. Your, in, your invisible servant has Dead. dissipated. Probably was detected, as was the last one. I or can no, cast last one last of those and then turn into a fire elemental and do the rest. I wonder if electricity would do anything. 
If you want to go blow a spell slot, by all means. If it would travel through... It would probably be quite shocking. (laughs) (laughs) I just don't want to, you know, transform and then... Yeah. Need to be... Regards. Fire. So... I'll shoot an acid splash into the water as a cantrip, just see what happens. Uh, okay. Um, it hits the, uh, a portion of the water. A portion of the water turns kind of black. Are there any, like, little organisms dying, or...? I mean, they're almost invisible to see anyway, because they're so small. Um, but it does seem like a part of the water twitches less than the rest. Or it pulls back maybe a small amount. So, one more floor to go. What's the step? Have at her. <laughs> Last level four spell. All right. Fire <laughs> once more. Fire once more. This time I will Hold have you make a, a uh, damage roll. It'll be important. Cool. And that's going to hurt. Okay. I'll go up one floor. Hit the ground. Safety procedures. Yeah. <laughs> Lie on the floor. Sleeve my robe against my face. Hold my breath. 5d8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, okay. Okay. Max damage. That's 10, 21 again. Alright. Twenty-one fire. As Ooh. once again, the, for the third time, and with plenty of warning this time, the water once again is evaporated in front of you, um, and uh, the hallway is sizzling from the remains of the water, but seems to be passable. Um, I once again, I'm going to keep it up for good measure for okay. the full minute, mm-hmm. uh, which means anything within ten feet of it would need, need to repeat that check. Yep. Uh, at the beginning of their turn. Okay. That time seems to pass. Hmm? Is your, uh... Wow, words. You can see magic currently. Do you detect any in- invisible creatures? Mm, no, that would have gone... Okay. That was a while ago. While you were doing yeah. your okay. s- yeah, yeah, I suppose. Because I'm wondering, like, what if the Elhun is invisible and just waiting for us to clear And water? detect magic doesn't detect invisible creatures because you cannot see the creature that the spell is on. I thought it would be like... Uh, detect creature. magic is an ambient thing. You see all yep. the area, but invisibility in particular is invisible yeah, to because, it. Because you can't... It's You detect magic on things you can see. Yeah. Because I don't have to see invisibility. Yep, because it's, that's its own spell. I tell one of the candles to walk down uh, until it detects something in the middle of the room and then come back. And okay. And I watch it as I follow it down. Okay. As you follow it down, uh, you go down the stairs. Is anybody else going down or just them? Clark will. I'll uh, follow after the fire's done. Okay. Yeah. Well, I presume this is after the fire is yeah. going, so you don't burn yourself on the way down. Logic. So let's have a marching order. Oh, and we'll shit. use this one here, the blank template over here. Uh-huh. I'm not first. I want to be, but like, uh, logical safety, the, the logical and like safety part of Zekus. That sounds like Clark might be going first then. Okay. <laughs> well, I think that the no, tiny servant is first. Oh, yeah. well then, slide and then, the guy. And then, is it the tomato? Tomato? <laughs> it's a potion. So. It looks like a tomato. <laughs> a healthy tomato. <laughs> it, Clark. Yes, please. I'll go in the middle. I'll go last. Uh, Radix will go last. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right, I forgot about Radix. <laughs> yeah, if you want Radix in the back. Radix, that's inappropriate. Behind. Yeah. <laughs> it was your own, but don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As you move around the corner, you do notice the stairs are a little bit longer than the previous ones have been. Um, Is that where the Unseen Servant would have been the first time? Like, because it was deeper? You couldn't see it, so you have no idea where how far it would get down. It went and did its things, but you don't have any connection to it when you're, when you're moving along. And there's no corpse, so you have no idea how far it went. There might be a corpse, you just don't know um, it. This one is going to be a little different. There is no interior wall, and there's no stairs way down down from here. Just a ring? So just the, the initial stairs you have, and then they're going to about 
20 feet before the stairs have actually finished, the interior wall disappears. So probably at that point, your servant has gone and looked into the room. Sure. Uh, just ahead of you. And you would also see this. So imagine where you are right now um, to Kuzaima, essentially, okay. and to there. Clark. Well, we'll back it up a little bit so you open space. It's just below. Um, if you want to rotate them back a little bit there. And the other thing you notice is, is while the stairs themselves were carved in, the walls seemed to be scored and pitted and and uh, and. There you go, mark the end of the wall. Yeah, let's, do the, let's do the map screen here. Um, scraped and pitted and. Uh, are you are you, are you observing Stop. yourself? I am. Um, Stop observing yourself. Uh, just for fun. Sure. The unseen servant. It's already He's gone. Dead. Yep. Already gone. Um, just to mourn it. So the center of the room is open, and in the center of the room there is um, what looks to be a uh, a kind of an indented ball. So imagine the star stone falls from the sky, digs down through many, many layers of rock that crumble in behind it, and then collides with the ground, coming to rest here. This much you'd already more or less determined by the way that the the tower was built and seemed to be heading towards this. Now you see it embedded in the stone itself, a small portion of it still sticking up above, but in the middle where there would normally be a full round top, it, the top has been carved down inward into almost a bowl shape. Uh, around the, the that that bowl, um, there are um, multiple. Um, what look like tools that you can kind of see a little bit. You also notice the ground is still wet and the pool has water in it. Your fire didn't extend all the way down in filling this room. Yeah. But there wasn't a lot of water left and a lot of it burned up and kind of kept going up. Um, you also can hear the sound of water moving out through small cracks in the stone below. It was draining slowly on its own. Um, one of the things that I'll suggest is the water not exactly sentient, but knows to get away from danger. It may have fled, or may have tried to flee as much as it can. Um, there is no sign of the Alhun. Bezetsi does not appear to be here. There does not appear to be a way out, however. So, the tiny servant stops, uncertain as to what to do. Not really seeing anything, but seeing something in the middle of the room. Kind of looks back to you. What is it? What is it? Does Zacchaeus push forward? No, because I'll pick up the tiny servant and go check out the thing in the middle of the room. It could be dangerous. And as you pick up the the tiny servant, there's a flash of light in front of you as lightning streaks up the stairs. Each of you make a dexterity save. Do I see the throw. caster? Nope. Fuck. 18. Okay. 11. Uh, I think that cocked. I'm calling that 11? No, 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty sure that's a fail either way. Nope. Yeah, all right. Oh, please. But the stairs curve, though, so does it hit everybody? Because uh, I'm at the end. Just it it's just enough to make the line. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> it is weird. It's not made for that. Uh, ten over here. Ten. And for. Ten. I got a nine. You got a nine. So nobody beat a sixteen. No. I, I had so, an eighteen. Okay. You got an eighteen. Okay. okay. I thought so, somebody had. So the critter, uh, my tiny servant with blind sight, didn't sense anything in the hallway. Uh, how, what's the the, the, the no, sixty the, feet? Sixty feet. Uh, he did not. Okay. Uh, because it's blind sight, but it still can't see invisible. Uh, blind sight tells you whatever is there. Uh, I mean, that's the point of blind sight, is if you're blind, you can still okay. notice things. things. Um, I wish you had mentioned that to me earlier, because it's going to make it really complicated now. Um, Awkward. We see you. Um, it's going to check something for you. Well, actually, uh, have it make a roll at disadvantage. Perception check. Nope. Okay, that's simply done. Uh, so it didn't notice in time. So, do do do, burn eye level spell. Lightning. 
Uh, a bunch of d6s. Okay. And after the spell is cast, its invisibility drops. Why have invisibility? If you can't use it to cast something big. All right. So that is. The longer he counts, the more scared I get. <laughs> 29 points of lightning damage. Oh, if succeeded, that would be 15. Or 14, sorry. 29, uh, okay. 14? Yeah. As the only person. Oh, that, that was 17. Now you can see. Oh, Clark goes down? Clark drops. Ooh. Yeah. Should have taken those short rests. What was the difficulty? Actually, 16. Doesn't matter. Uh, all the, the uh, servants go. Oof. Do I see him? Oh yeah, yeah he's clearly initiative? visible now. So now we're going to roll initiative. Uh, yes, these dice, because I don't need them anymore. Ooh. And we'll have one for, oh shit, Radix. Radix fails. Okay. is not looking happy about that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, he's in front of me. That's why. So, 20 to 25. Oh, 20. We'll do 24. 24. Right. And 20. Okay. 15 to 20. 10 to 15. 11. 11. Sorry, reading. <laughs> Excited for combat reading spells. <laughs> and. Uh, what was that? 10 to 15. 5 to 10? 8. 8. And Radix is going to go to the rear. Uh, Kuzaima. It is now clear where the thing is. It took its one strike. It's now visible, however. Looking somewhat satisfied that at least one of you dropped, but still. Cocked back up. So are we still up the stairs, or back. were we at the doorway? You're still at the top of the stairs, so the stairway, um, the wall right beside you, the interior wall is now is now mm. empty. So you can jump down in. It's only about mm -hmm. uh, five or ten feet at that point. Five point really. How far away is the thing? Uh, if it's, if it's where it is, there it's about fifteen. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, I'll hop down um, inside the room. Your orc thing it takes place immediately upon hitting zero. By the way, not on my turn. No, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a reaction to you having yeah, when, to Yeah, when zero. you hit zero, you, may, uh, you get to decide to not hit zero. Alright, well, I decide not to hit zero. So you kind of. Nope, zeros. I die and I rise again! Zeros are for squares. They're for first uh, person. I will. Should be cast tally he, that. The feel, uh, the feel of the hum is very, very strong at I this will, point. I will healing word Clark. However, you have noticed, uh, and even with this massive spell going off, Nothing has happened recently. You healed ten. Okay. Nothing has happened. Maybe. There's been no reactions to your spells. Oh, it's not. Yeah. I forgot about that. Magic. Something has changed. Uh, what's in the middle of the room? Just the uh, the pit. Um, we have the uh, yeah. Put the blue circle in the middle of the room, just to indicate where it is. Basically, that's the top of the star stone. Which itself has a pool of water, gray water, on top of it. Hmm. I use my dagger to stir the water around some, see if there's anything living in it. Okay. Um, it seems to have the same consistency as the brackish water up above. 
and as you stir it around, um, while the, the shape of the water should change to potentially allow some of it to slosh over, it resists sloshing over, almost mm -hmm. as though it's trying to stay coherent. Okay. Zacchaeus. I'm assuming that's the mm -hmm. thing you want to do. Okay. That's all I got. Well, Zacchaeus reacts out of anger at getting fried by lightning. That, that, that's usually my jam, you know? It's, you know, yeah. a thing. So, um, Zetsi's going to make a DC... 19 saving throw. What are you casting? Disintegrate. Okay. I can uh, see it, right? What level spell is that? Six. Okay. I can see it, right? Like, line of sight. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you shot me, okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, yep. Does not manage to counterspell it. What's the uh, DC against? 19. But what, what, uh, uh dex or? I don't know. Dex, I believe, yeah. I, I'm like 90% sure it's dex. I just looked it up and I just forgot. Whee! And this is a spell effect? Is disintegrate. That's not great. Yes, yeah, it doesn't matter which one it is, I still didn't succeed. Didn't quite make it high enough. Should okay, have. so it's going to take. Should be interesting. Oh, I got shitty numbers. Wait. So. 10. 22. No, 24. Okay. No. Bring it all together to 10s. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, but only one adds up to 10, like, neatly. <laughs> Alright. So 10, 22. 12. So 10, 22. 16, so 21. 21. So 31 plus 40. So 71. 71. Okay. That plus 40 saves like any bad rolls. And like, I don't know why, but like, the more I try to do math, the slower it gets and the less <laughs> I can do it. it, it means Considering that the average for that, I believe, is 70. You rolled above average. Whee! So the, <laughs> the disintegrate flies out this. Oh, what, what kind of magic is that? What kind of damage Force. is that? Force. Uh, or untyped. Force. Yep, force. Okay. Force. Uh, so, so, luckily, no resistance there. Uh, as it kind of Very goes out and, and smashes into him, you can see the body kind of distorting and breaking underneath the robes, uh, as though the the uh, the the body itself was was uh, brittle and uh, frail. Um, but there he still stands. Um, uh, and again, there's a sort of look of admiration. Uh, in the midst of all of this, at you. I'll back up two spaces so he can't shoot at me again. <laughs> can I move through Radix? Yes, she's small enough. Absolutely. And friendly. Yeah. And friendly. What was your initiative, uh, uh, Kajima? 24. Okay. And yours was 19? 20. 20. Like 30, 20. Okay. okay. That is okay. All right. Uh, you don't hear it because the mental command. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Tempting. Tempting. Which one does it believe in the most? Uh. Philosophical question there. It is kind of it felt strangely philosophical. It can't see me. When you only have that one, uh, well, that doesn't stop it necessarily. But, uh, okay, so. And if it can, if it, if it can, if it can invade my mind, it can't cast disintegrate anymore, because I only have one spell slot for that. Wow, that's not nearly as useful as it sounded originally. All right, let's see. Right in blood of the day, I played in a campaign that we actually casted reincarnate on a player character who was a minotaur. He was our holy cow. It was great. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> you mean he came back as a minotaur? Okay. No, he was a minotaur. 
She's never gonna ask me. It's not too bad. Uh, or she. Okay. It shimmers and disappears. So take it off the board, please. Um, Elzara, your well, turn. I am going to, seeing that everybody has been damaged, uh, some more than others, you should have told me that you're down that well. <laughs> Hard to tell in this world. He wears it well. Eh, mm -hmm. he tends to not. Uh, I'm going to use my fifth level spell and cast Mass Cure Rune. Woo! Everybody will heal. 3d8 plus 4. Uh, it's, ugh. Ugh. 13 points. All right. Change that. <laughs> um, then as my bonus action, I say up, and I'm going to back up the stairs. Okay. Um, by, let's see. So, by saying up, the shield hops up. Shield into, hops up into motion. Into motion. And follows me as I back up 40 feet. What's up? I thought so too, but turns out it's up. Oh, it was it's jump. jump yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. yeah. Well, <laughs> Actually, I'm just going back up thirty feet. Okay. Um, and yeah, that is bonus action. And move. And move. Clark. Bonus action to do uh, that thing with the healing. Second wind. Ah, yes. Because of reasons. Yeah. We're rolling shit on healing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, is second win you can spend your hit dice? No, nope. just heal one d10. Or you just heal one d10. Okay, yeah, right. Plus d10 plus level. warrior level, yeah. Right. So that's seven for me, and that makes that that. Okay. <clears throat> Into the room. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Clark will hop over the thing, drop down, and okay. uh, meet uh, Ironbound at the thing. All right, so you come around there. Yeah. All right. Uh, glaive at the ready, I guess? Okay. Question mark? You can take an action to try to look around to see it. Sure. If there's an it. It's a perception check at disadvantage. All right. If it's still there. <laughs> if. Sure it is. Yeah, whatever. Basically, you have to spend the time looking anyway. Uh, disadvantage is a dirty 20. Whoa. Dirty 20? Dirty 21. Actually. Woo! Whew. That's really good. No, um, team vision over here, you know. Oh, that's true. That's true. Uh, you actually know where it is, oh. at least at the moment. It, it, there's a uh, hit? You can make out the vague changes in... Light? Reflected light from nowhere okay. that's sort of coming it's about. Kind of a it's a weird sort of thing. Um, I'd like to attack the darkness. <laughs> well, you've already used your action. Oh, right. Um, but it is actually uh, standing... <laughs> Jesus, this is bad. Standing right beside the, the pool. Okay. With its... Uh, Outstretched palm, kind of touching into the pool itself. Can I point? You can. Because my Cause people are still at disadvantage to hit it because they can't see it, but they have it. They can actually attack it. Yeah. Uh oh. Okay. There's nothing I can do to it anyway. So. Uh, Radix's turn. Uh, is there anything else you want to do? That's your bonus. That's your action. That's your move. So. Okay. You can uh, action, action search. You could action search. Mm-hmm. Oh, what again. the hell. Yeah, you might want to hit it now while you know where it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's and what Axe and is like for. <laughs> if you want. Yeah. One second, sir. I'm just checking a thing. I need a bonus action for that. Bonus action for that. Okay, just a strike then. Okay. Well, two strikes, actually. An attack action. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's a full action, so. Uh, it's still a disadvantage to hit it, but. Oh, well, in that case, the first one um, is at uh, 21. <laughs> That's a hit. Woo! Cool. Second one, unless we get it done with now, uh, is higher than that. So <laughs> okay. They both hit, I guess. Uh, and what kind of damage is it again? Well, I'll tell you. Normal damage so to start with okay. is going to be uh, 
23 regular ass damage. Okay. And here comes the necrotic. Um, six necrotic. Okay. Three at a time, if that matters. Okay. The glaive hits something very, very solid. Oh, good. Uh, and there's a small mental shriek that happens. Mm-hmm. Are you striking again? That was my two. That, okay, that's right. Yeah. All right. Does it, uh, sound, does it become visible? No. Okay. Uh, actually, sorry, I've got to check. Yeah, it's a concentration Yeah, it's a concentration spell. spell. Uh, there's a chance. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, shit, this is actually close. Uh, no, it does not become visible. Okay. That was really goddamn close. <laughs> Probably some gunk on the floor, though, from where, whatever came out. Well, as you thing. pull the blade back and kind of shake it, there's a bit of blood yeah. that becomes visible once it's outside of the creature. Uh, Radix's turn. So I think Radix will come down the stairs. How many? Um, all the way down to the bottom, actually. Yeah, Radix was pretty quick. So. To, just to where the wall ends or the bottom of the stairs? The bottom of the stairs. Okay. Um, she can't see it, and she was around the corner when you catered where it was. Can't she see the blood on the floor? I, I can have her make a roll to see if she can spot where it was, but she won't be able to take an action to do anything about it. Uh, Yeah, actually, she knows exactly where it is. Uh, she hasn't got any anything to do right now, but she kind of comes around. There it is, and is pointing straight at it. Kujima. Uh Radix is pointing ahead of you, much the same spot where Jody, where uh, Jody, where Clark was, uh, <laughs> was Clark was attacking. Player suddenly appears. So you have a rough idea where it is. Who is that hero? Hmm. Well. <laughs> if he's got his hand in the water, do I see that spot? Uh, you can make a perception check to check to point it out. No, I'm just wondering if I happen to see it. It doesn't make any right real there. ripple in the water. Well, because it's displacing the water if he's got his hand in it. But if not I don't, a, not see effectively it, enough. No. Uh, well, well, bonus action to healing word him again. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Slowly heal the Clark. Who Eleven then more. Loses everything. <laughs> Eleven more. Oh no. Hmm. What do I see in the water? The water is no longer bloodied. Uh, nothing particularly in the water itself, other than again that sort of same gray surface. Okay. Now I'll search the room, see if there's anything. Uh, okay. Uh, make an investigation check. Do you want to go anywhere in particular? Nope. Okay. I mean, if, if I see something, that's where I'll be. Okay. Fourteen. Fourteen? I'm going to draw one from the hat. I just sign on for a hat. What do I see, though? Uh, it's basically carved into stone. It's a small okay. stone tablet. Or would you like that to have been in the room? That's going to be over kind of at the feet of where uh, uh, Zakis is. Yeah. Right here? Basically over there, something catches your eye. Okay. Okay. Zakis. Uh, we'll take a look at it in case it's something useful. Where is it? Uh, of course, I didn't see it go invisible again. But uh, Radix is still pointing at it, though. Okay. So you'll have a chance to actually. I mean, Literally, like. Clark is in within a second or so of having just struck it twice, too. Okay. So. Yeah. But that was literally while like, while Zacchaeus is behind the wall. Yeah, so. I mean, right now he's just, he's still recovering the glaive. It's not like he's stopped and he's waiting. So I will cast the magic missile of where uh, Radix is pointing. You can't see it, so you can't target a yeah. magic missile. Yeah, you could do other stuff, but not magic missile specifically. I will cast a firebolt to mm-hmm. where Radix is pointing. There you go. Uh, yep, at disadvantage. Motherfucker! No, that's a seven, not a one. <laughs> it's like with the light, it, it looked like a one and like a dot next to it. So, seven plus eleven. That's with his advantage? Yeah. Okay. Eighteen. Eighteen hits. Damn it. Pew. 
A. 19 damage, fire. Okay, fire damage. And I'll retreat back. One step, because that's all the movement I have left. Concentration check. Alright. Is he still invisible? Not that I can see, because I backed away against the wall. Yes. You did it. <laughs> With the brain talk. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. So that's not going to happen then. That's not going to happen. Uh, that is so weird. I thought that actually did something useful. It's weird for a six level spell. All right. Before the spell goes off, you do hear the somewhat sad voice in your head. I would have liked to have known your intellect while alive. Make a dexterity saving throw. Woo! 19! 19. So you're only going to take half the damage of the disintegrate. Shit bricks. Do I see him? Uh, you will after the spell is mm. cast. Uh, you, can I counterspell? Nope. Assuming you still have eyes after You can only counterspell <laughs> if you can see them casting. Uh, actually, more oh, I'm glad I made the save, otherwise it's like... <laughs> it would have been interesting. <laughs> it's, it's still lucky, depending on what the dice are. Yeah, they're not that great. Whew. What's your hit points right now? 39. <laughs> then you're out. No, because I saved. It's half damage. Oh, I suppose, yeah. There's a chance. There's, there's a chance I might... Oh. Especially if he says he got shitty. Numbers. So 67 Woo! halved is 30, 33. <laughs> I got 6 HP left. <laughs> Sorry, that was close to the mic. <laughs> Same at home. Thank you, Hal Monday. Takes his, takes his shot. <laughs> I have my uh, dude. And he does appear. And he steps Ooh. into the pool. Oh. Uh, fuck. Does he have to climb to do that? Uh, he's got the movement. I'm just asking. And you can see as the uh, the ooze that's in the pool itself seems to crawl up the outside of his clothing. Yeah, okay. All right. How's there? I've become a bit hotter. <laughs> More hotter than the fire, elemental? <laughs> fire elemental, please. All right. Woo! Summon fire elemental. Uh, however, uh, if you do try to move down the hallway, there is not really enough sp space for you to get around them without hurting them. In that hallway is so narrow. Unless you can, is this I, the one that can go down to an inch? I can go down to an okay. inch in the I thought the air was the only well. one that could do that, but. Yep. Fire form. Um, and I'm probably like yeah. on my ass against the wall. Or actually, no, it doesn't knock me prone, does it? It just does. No, it just starts tearing you apart. Cool. Not really. Uh, just to double check. Uh, yeah, as narrow as within one each, a creature that touches the elemental uh, takes. Uh, or Is it within five feet? Uh, or hits it with a melee attack, uh, and if I enter its turn, then that creature takes that uh, and catches fire. But there's no five foot rule in this case. No, okay. it's only if someone attacks or I am in their space. Okay, good, good. I so. thought there was a five foot rule. I was like, I don't want you to burn all of your friends on that <laughs> stairwell because <laughs> yep. that would be embarrassing. So. Well, it's, if it's if you attack or are within their space. Yeah. But then, I can yeah, go into a space it. as big as one. Yeah, inch. but you can't get more than five feet away from them even passing yeah. through. Because it's, it's a yeah. narrow, narrow hallway, right? Yeah, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah, technically, if it says moving within their space, then it doesn't matter how yeah. big you are. It's just about whether you enter the square or not. And you're really, really hot. At However, you could change. move somewhere and then change into a fire elemental. Yeah, yeah. that might be the better... Route. Well, I can't move after that is the issue. And if I move 30 feet and then take my, my other 20 feet of movement or whatever... I'm still, wherever I move, I'm going to be within everyone, mm. range, range of everyone. So, but it, it's not within five feet, though. It's within, like, if I'm engulfed, if I touch them. 
Well, it, the way the well, if it says literally, if you move into their square, yeah. then and uh, first time in into their square or through their square. Uh, no, wouldn't matter. Uh, well, it would just be a, a pun to move into. First time and yeah. Do it. No, that's fine. We it, can take it. Small price to pick up six HP. <laughs> Yeah. If, if I take like one HP, then it's like yeah, whatever. So Fine, like, I'll so walk up in, in front of Zacchus and then do it. Yeah, that way you only get him. Yeah. <laughs> That's just what kidding. I can do. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoosh. Again, it's just the narrowness of this hallway makes it it difficult to. It worked oh. in your favor as far as the fire wall itself, but yeah. it's kind of dangerous here. So anyway. So swoosh into the room. Swoosh fire, the burn, room. Firm. fire, burn, burn. Fire. I'm going to go. On top of them. <laughs> into its space. Okay. Uh, so, and actually, I'm going to attack it first and then go into its space. <laughs> Just because I can. Just because I can do that in that order. Insults and injuries. Uh, okay, attack one uh, is a nope. Attack two, however, is a 19. 19 hits. So, because I doubt that an 8 hits. You're right. <laughs> uh, I assumed not. Um, that is eight fire damage. Okay. And is on fire. You notice with some satisfaction that as the fire uh, reaches out and touches him. Mm -hmm. The water that had been gathering around him also sizzles and smokes. Or sizzles uh, and, and, uh, and I go into its space. Uh, let me just do some math. All right. Uh, so I'm touching the fire, or I'm, I'm touching the water. Um, oh, okay. Like the, the water stuff. All right. If uh, you're going to touch the water, you'll be touching the stone as well. That makes sense. I, I can't fly. I'm touching the stone anyway. Okay. Make a wisdom saving throw. Uh oh. Yeah. Wisdom. So, Come on. ooh, uh, that is a, I can math, 12. 12? The definition of playing with fire. Okay. Uh, that, that would all be appropriate. So, um, the hum floods over you. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. You find yourself stunned. Unable to move. I believe I am immune. Oh. Uh, stunned. Yeah, no, I'm fine with stunned. Um, for a round. Okay. As the as the energy simply overloads you, for the rest of the people standing around, you see the, the fire elemental that's familiar to you stand up on this stone, and it is as though the stone itself starts to react and, and pop and sizzle, and the fiery form also starts to spark and, and blow out uncontrollably. Who is within five feet of this? Me. Okay. Well, Clark is. Make a dexterity saving throw, each of you. Will do. Is Bizetsi still on fire, though? Natural uh, 20. Bizetsi will have his own problems to deal with here in a second. got to roll <laughs> a couple of things. No, that's much better. Dex, you say? Yes. Five. Okay. Um, what did you roll? 28. 20. 20. 20. Yeah, stand uh, is its own uh, condition, correct? Uh, yeah, you can yeah. take no actions and yeah. you automatically fail dex nine. and strength checks and things. So you take nine fire damage okay. as it sort of juts out in all directions around you. Sorry, fam. Now, oh. here's the dangerous part. Oh. He can't actually, well, he might succeed because uh, he has advantage on that, but uh, uh, where are you? Too many windows suddenly opening up. Uh, and that's a dex. Yeah, it still doesn't make it even with advantage. Uh, as he gets lit on fire, make, uh, that was nine damage. All right. I mean, he was already on fire. Uh, more on fire. Well, this was a, this was the explosive yeah. fire damage, essentially. Uh, he's not on fire until his turn. <laughs> Technically, weirdly, he's not on fire until his turn. I, I've attacked him, so yes. Uh, hmm? I've he, attacked he'd him, be so on yes. fire. He just wouldn't take damage. The effect doesn't the happen until his turn. It's, yeah. yeah. It's the way turn-based combat gets weird sometimes. So technically he's alive for the moment. Don't expect that to last. Clark. Yeah, uh, Clark has an idea of what to do. All right. So, uh, he's going to take the glaive and firmly plant it on the floor uh, with his foot. Okay, and fall on it. 
uh, and then uh, use his last charge to extend it to 15 feet uh, <laughs> through the guy into the ceiling. She is surrounding it. Uh, it's a fire. <laughs> Who knows what fire is? Okay. It's a mystery. All right. That's interesting. Sure. So a switchblade goes the blade. Uh, uh, 18 to hit. 18 hits him. I'll have you make a dexterity saving throw as the fire elemental surrounding him. Mm. Oh. Mm. Sorry. It's a 12. So damage to both of them. fire. Uh, get to reroll that guy. Uh, eight with two necrotic, so 10 total. Uh, he starts to sizzle and writhe as he falls inside of the fire. Mm. Oh. No. <laughs> Sorry, hidden knowledge. Not for us. Fire versus knowledge. It's great. Uh, and he falls. Like, hmm. um, you continue to spark, and while well, you're standing there stunned for a moment, there does not seem to be any other emotion other than the fact that the elemental is sparkling. Uh, okay. I would come my turn move. Come your turn, you're stunned. <laughs> so you're still there for another round. Another wisdom saving throw. That's better. Uh, that is a... Wow, math, 16. 16. <laughs> you feel your limbs start to... Well, not limbs. You feel your... your your familiar, familiar body shape start to loosen up, and on the next turn you're not stunned. Okay. Uh, as the rest of you come to realize that uh, the now nearly consumed flesh of Bezetsi is in the center of the fire, and as you back off there's almost nothing left. And what is left turns to a, a dark ash, which turns to a dark liquid, and then evaporates, as you've seen many who die here go through. Actually, sorry, he turns to dark ash, and the ash itself disintegrates. He's not alive. He was actually undead, but that's not something you would necessarily know. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you have succeeded. Hello. The space is right. empty. The stone in front of you still seems to be vibrant with energy. You can hear it. Um, and as you look around the room, and as you take time to search now, freedom given to you by having defeated this thing. Presumably, wherever the Glompkins were, they did not come to his aid, surprisingly enough. You find a couple of things. What looks similar to the pod you found upstairs, you find little bits and pieces, almost as though a second construction was done here. You find the... Um, I'm going to have to describe this quickly because we want to come to an end, but I want to lead you in a particular direction. You find tools that as you take a close look at them, both from the alchemist point of view and from the, uh, the arcane point of view, trying to figure out what he was constructing here. The term comes to you almost, almost out of the blue, and to a certain degree you wonder if it's an echo, in fact, of what the stone itself in front of you has for power. Because these stones are known to transform things and people and places with enormous amounts of power. If harnessed properly, there's not really sure what this could actually do as far as limits. What this one seems to have been doing, and what seems to have been the case from all of this, is taking the very essence of a person, which in this place can be compressed down into a, into a soul stone, and transforming it into something else. Transforming it into a thing. The other thing that you've realized from the resonance of your ring. Mm -hmm is inside of these pieces, inside of these tools, is the smallest remnant of Riordan's soul. I drop my form and I start digging furiously for that piece. You find numerous pieces. It looks as though they had been kind of put together. Um, the term soul forge comes to mind. The compression of a soul into a thing, the creation of a new thing that would be roughly bowl-shaped, judging by the top of this and you find just the smallest etching on the inside of one of these tools. And that, even for just a moment, that resonance comes back to you. And flooding to you is a memory. 
the day he proposed. And what's weird about this memory is it's not yours. It's his. That holds that little sliver right there. That thing you had detected from so far away is right there. But it means that whatever was left of his soul was transformed into something else. Whatever you're feeling is what's left of what he has become. And with that, I think we'll bring this session to a close. Congratulations, everyone. You've just gone up a level. Hey! Lucky number 13 for me. Let's roll this on, <laughs> on camera. Roll right now? Okay. Uh, sure. Let's go back to the primary mode here. To people's <laughs> Who do I trust? Distinct reactions. Don't trust me. <laughs> I stabbed you while you were fighting. I think she's, she wants to roll her, uh, her hit points right now. Because I'm a crazy person. That's true. I'm... My streak is done. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I just you went it. to set it. <laughs> you went to it's set not it. My fault. All right. With that, I'd my like streak to, uh, is done. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. I thank all of my players for playing. I'm I'm glad we got to that point. I wanted us to get to that point so that we're you are now done with Emerald's Tower. You have a decent idea of what he was doing. You still have one potential loose end if you wish to tie that up, but otherwise you now know something of what you're going to be looking forward to seeing. So he was like counterfeiting shadow coins, basically. Um, it's more than that. <laughs> okay. It's more than that because shadow coins are inert. Yeah. This is not. This is not. Let's use. So, this. can we take? We'll, it we'll chat a little bit a, later on. First of all, we're dinner. we're going to bring this to a close. I want to thank all my players. Thank all of you for watching. Uh, if people want to get involved with this some more, potentially, what's a way, uh, Marie, that they might contact us on social media? Hello. Facebook page, leg uh, writing. <laughs> Facebook page, Legends of the Drowned Isles. Uh, the group is Watchers of the Drowned Isles. Uh, I mentioned my Instagram. I shared a picture from it onto the page during the session. Uh, you can find that there. I post pictures sometimes. Uh, and that's my part of it. I'm going to continue writing. <laughs> we do try to live stream on Sunday afternoons on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. Because you might have been watching this on YouTube, and if they did watch this on YouTube, what's the do, Jody? Uh, you got to do the subscribe thing, and you hit bells, and you share the video to your friends so we can all uh, enjoy this lovely streamed game. I hope you've enjoyed this particular section. We'll move on to a brand new section, hopefully in a cooler area, very shortly. Hopefully next week. See you then. <laughs>